everybody. Good, Good evening. evening. How's it going? Doing all right. <laughs> uh, tonight we have the uh, pleasure of being joined by Derek and Grace from Stop Skeletons from Fighting. I met them hey. at, uh, at Too Many Games and said, you guys want to be on the live stream? And they said, yeah. So here, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> that that happened pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, it really yep. did. Usually, you know, we make these plans, and then it's, uh, you know, it's like months go by. I was I was on it. I was like, no, nope, this needs to happen. I, I was really excited about it. So yeah, Grace Grace handles all that stuff much better than I. The reason why it happened quickly is because Grace was on it and not Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I it's you know it's I know that feeling, <laughs> uh, but. You know, thanks for for uh, for joining us. I mean, it's it's really really cool to have you, especially you know, Derek. You've been doing this for the YouTube game for a very a very long time. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for having us. First off, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, yeah, yeah it, it's a uh, next month will be ten years I've been doing this. Holy cow! Wow. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were you were used to be a member of Retroware. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was really almost like from the start. I kind of like came out with a couple of videos, met some people, and then I think I, I started right after Retroware started. They were looking for uh, uh, for talent, and somehow um, I conned my way into that <laughs> website. <laughs> um, like we we kind of got into this very late, I guess, and we weren't familiar with a lot of shows. I think the first uh, episode of yours that I saw was the uh, one you did on Point Blank, on the Point Blank oh, series. Huh. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> and then I think that was right around the time that we, we streamed that, which was, wow, this must've been two years ago now, almost two years, a year and a half, maybe. That, that video I think was 2012. <laughs> it's that, 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 sounds, that sounds so long ago in YouTube years. It really, yeah, it really is. I, I did that video because uh, I, I, once I searched around and nobody had done a review of Point Blank and I was like, oh wow, there's a whole lot of light gun games. No one's done reviews for, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Awesome, strike yeah. well, I'm gonna hit well, this fertile soil." And actually, those videos didn't do so well because I don't think there's a whole lot of interest in uh, light gun games compared to some of the other topics that I touched on. So, uh, it's and that's actually kind of nice to hear you say <laughs> that. That was one of the <laughs> yeah. I mean, we would love to do more light gun stuff ourselves just because it's fun. I mean, don't really care if people are that into it or not. <laughs> but who knows? I mean, th this might be. Uh, this might be a good audience for talking to the, about that kind of stuff too, since uh, so many people around here like CRTs anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the only way to play them. So, uh, you know, yeah. a lot of people. I mean, we focus a lot on that kind of stuff, so people get excited about it. Oh, that, that's like what your channel's great. It's more of like the tech side of it, and right. uh, more about like the you know the hardware, not so much the software. Which, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's one of the great things about you know this YouTube game thing is that there's so many avenues and angles that you can and you know talk about your passion with video games and find an audience everyone's got their own niche that they kind of uh jump into yeah <laughs> and recently you guys have kind of got into uh a whole thing with <laughs> your your ukulele video is is i w would is infamous like a, a something you would attach to it at this point because well, I mean, it was it was, it was a little controversial, I guess. I was just being honest. Yeah. It was uh, honestly, it, it was an enormous surprise. Grace can attest to this. Um, like before, I, when I was making that video, I wanted to have it out like many weeks earlier and wasn't able to get it done. And actually, uh, in making that, I was like, man, this this game came out like two months ago now. No one's even going to care about it. I'm working on this video. <laughs> no one's going to watch it. And I, I was actually, I got real sad about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, like you guys, I'm sure have this same feeling too when you're like working on a video and you're just like, no one cares, and also yeah. everyone else is way more talented than I am. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're just every, like, it's every, part of that creative yeah. process. So you have that breakdown, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. but yeah, it ended up doing really well for us. Um, it's also kind of weird because it's the we yeah I don't know it's, well, it's we're rarely negative on games because our our channel is kind of about like celebrating the weird yeah that's... like bullshit mm -hmm. that happens mm -hmm. and so like but this was one time where Derek and I were just really angry at this yeah. this one particular game <laughs> just so many things we we only pick we topics have... when we feel like we have something we feel like there's something there yeah and we played this game just you know 
uh, you, ukulele, I, you know, I played about 10 or so, maybe more hours of it, and I can't say that I really enjoyed any of it, to be honest. That, so I mean, that's, that, that's really sad because, you know, I, I was kind of excited about that game, and I still haven't gotten it yet. And, I, you know, I generally have heard, like, eh, not so great things about it. And so, like, I, I still kind of want to get it and just judge it for myself, but I've kind of avoided watching a lot of stuff about it. Because I, I just kind of don't want to be influenced by it, but I don't know. Well, I, th- I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I did not like that game, like, <laughs> almost at all. But I wouldn't say that it was, just, you know, there. at least it was a functioning game. You know, I think uh, it was not, like, a broken, huge mess. There were some technical issues with it. But, like, at the end of the day, it was just, like, similar to Mighty Number no. 9 in that, like, it was a painfully mediocre game. Mm-hmm. Such a disappointing game. Uh, and so I think, though, it is still a, a functioning game, and I think that there's still – there, there's some aspects. <laughs> the way that that game worked out, some people are able to uh, still appreciate it, and that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not out there trying to be like, everyone has to hate this game. It was me being honest, and that's how we always do our videos, is especially for the reviews. It's just like play the game and be honest. It was just typically uh, if a game is bad, we just kind of move on, but this one just really kind of stuck uh, – Stuck in my craw because I I was rooting for it. I didn't support the game, um, but like I really enjoyed Banjo. I went back and played Donkey Kong 64 and was actually kind of shocked at <laughs> how much I didn't hate it. it. That game has huge problems, but I did actually end up playing for about as long as I played Ukulele. And I, wow. for some reason, I don't know, I kind of enjoyed Donkey Kong 64 a little more. Um, but uh, <laughs> oh gosh. It's it's, it's the, the Kickstarter thing is just such a strange topic. It's such a weird. Um, you can almost say like it's, 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 a, it's, it's it works. It's 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 definitely a chapter in video game. The last the last decade for sure. Yeah. I think when it comes to a close, they'll be like, oh, remember the the Kickstarter craze of the right. you know teens, whatever you want to call this decade, and it's it's yeah. been, it's been a very fascinating. Turn of events. The naughty oddies, I think is what they'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> and now we just so. got to put all of our faith into uh, Igarashi and hope that, hopefully that Bloodstain will turn out as good as everyone wants it to be. Because that's really like the last big well, one from is, like a formerly popular yeah, 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 hopes on. Which I know oh, people Shenmue really 3, like right. Shenmue 3. Yeah, I, 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 think what, I think what they're going to do with Shenmue 3 is they're going to make another Shenmue game. Mm-hmm. And people are going to forget that like those Shenmue games are kind of rough. They <laughs> were at a time and a place where they 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 definitely they definitely worked. But like I, I really am, I'm super on edge about how Shenmue Three is going to turn out and how it's going to be received. But I think Iga, one thing I was actually a little disappointed about with Bloodstained was that like oh he's just making another Symphony of the Night. He's done that a million times. But right. he's done that a million times. He's staying well within his comfort zone. Yeah. So he's not trying to reinvent nothing. He's really just trying to do it again. So uh, this actually seems like maybe a promising game, but also just, you know, I can't get my hopes up for it. I hope, you know, of course, all video games. The the 2.5D aspect might make it a little bit fresh within his realm. Well, I guess to be fair, like Symphony of the Night was the only game he made like on a console. And then he did three GBA. Yeah. 3DS and then like one 3DS game or maybe not even that but like didn't well Derek didn't he work on um, Castlevania Judgment <laughs> which was a console, <laughs> was a console well time. he worked on it but <laughs> you know what I, mean, I didn't like I didn't I mean the the PS2 games of course are you know pretty controversial too I guess I liked Lament of Innocence when it came out but I'm very afraid to revisit it because it was a very simple game but i yeah. liked it but then like curse of darkness i could never get into yeah i i i've wanted to go back to those games just because i think they'd be similar maybe maybe in a similar idea to uh, uh ukulele they might be interesting failures they might be like yeah. well they really tried something here and kind of how they didn't do it is is kind of interesting and worth talking about but yeah i haven't i haven't gone back to those i think i bought lament of innocence day one and never beat it because I just I couldn't bring my I just did not it was really a bummer and I think I got Curse of Darkness and played it for about ten seconds and went nope they didn't change anything <laughs> yeah, about yeah. my defenses I didn't like so well they, I mean they, I mean it's it, it plays pretty differently I mean Lament of Innocence is at least I I, I feel inoffensive um, <laughs> but 
uh, you know, maybe not spectacular, but inoffensive. Curse of Darkness, whew, I just did not think it was fun at all. I, I, I like, starred that game from the beginning twice, and I just couldn't get past, like, an hour or two. It's just not enjoyable. But I remember when Portrait of Ruin came out on DS, I just remember thinking, man, they could just do this exact same thing once a year, every year, forever, <laughs> and I would never get tired of it. And then, then yeah. Order of Ecclesia came out, and I'm like, <laughs> they, they couldn't do Am this I tired of this? <laughs> yeah, for me it was Portrait of Ruin because I was there for Symphony and I I, I really like Circle of the Moon. So actually, I believe so. And Ega didn't make Circle of the Moon, so I don't know if anybody in the comments is saying. Bruh, bruh, bruh. So I guess actually, whatever the second GBA game was, uh, I'm forgetting it. Harmony but, of Dissonance, right? Was, I think that was the second. Yeah, game. I believe. So. No, that was that's the that second GBA, right? Yeah, yeah. but I, I mean, but really, I was there for all of those GBA games and Symphony, and then I think. After Harmony of Dissonance on DS, or no, Dawn of Sorrow. That's what it was. Dawn of Sorrow was DS. Uh, that was when I was like, I think I'm good. I think I don't need any more Metroidvania. And I skipped Portrait, and I went to Order of Ecclesia, and I was like, Nah, I'm still, I'm still good. Well, now, now, everyone uh, really liked Ecclesia. So. Oh yeah, people. I see people in the chat are talking about the uh, Netflix Castlevania show, which mm. I don't know if you want to dive into that, but just like, I haven't seen it yet. I meant to watch it last night, but. I would say, yeah, you know, the bar is low, <laughs> and it clears it, way clears it. It's got some problems for sure, but, like, I got to say, those four episodes is short, um, and it's really just like a pilot. Yeah. It really feels like a 60-minute pilot episode stretched into a 100-minute four-act thing. Um, it is a bit long in the tooth. Oh, tooth. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm totally, if, if, if nothing else, like, yeah, bring me season two, Castlevania, Netflix. Um, I'm talking so much, Grace. I'm so sorry. If you have anything, that's, um, I'm just being a. a oh no, it, it, it's okay. If if you enjoy um, guys getting kicked in the nuts, <laughs> you <don't like> <laughs> the there's a lot of that going on. There's at least like three distinct times that it happens. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's pretty. Uh, in, it's all a blur at this point. In four it, it's 25 kind of minute episodes, place. that's pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is like immature yep. like absolutely like this is not uh it, it's really funny because um i i feel like my my main experience with castlevania is symphony of the night mm. and so like that this is just not that no like, it, it, <laughs> like it's, it's just, dracula's curse it's it's rondo of blood and dracula's and curse Drac dracula's got a lot of curses and he's got a lot of cusses mm -hmm. in, in that you know yeah. what i mean i'm excited to watch but, it i mean it's yeah no it's it's wasn't uh, like Paul Anderson was going to do a movie version of it for at a point, the guy who did Resident Evil. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! And I'm glad that because then he fair. went back to Resident Evil and ended up not doing it because he didn't do like Resident Evil two and three, I think. Something like that. Yeah, I I can't say I care. I probably produced <laughs> them all, but I I don't yeah. really know. I, I I still I still intend to one day watch the last two, I think two Resident Evil movies that I haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> I, I've lost track of how many there even are. I mean, to be honest, I like, I kind of enjoy them. Like, just as, just popcorn movies, I guess. Like, it's a, it's a alternate Resident Evil canon that has nothing in common with the games. I think they're, they're, they're decent enough entertainment. Yeah, they're fun to watch with your dad. <laughs> dad flicks like that, that's how i've experienced it. Yeah. my dad's into them like, we just hang out and do that yeah you know watch water world watch <laughs> the postman is also in the film your dad likes uh no i don't oh, okay. can't tell you he loves water world okay that's 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 enough that's, yeah <laughs> like watches enough. it once a year it's enough kevin costner for anyone yeah but anyway anyway we can definitely come back to it. i just want to say like i'm going to be playing uh herzog's y tonight which is arguably the first Real-time strategy game. Ever? Now, does it come? Does that? Does, does this come before Dune Two? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is Genesis 1989. I'm pretty sure that Dune, because Dune Two was, I it got a, con, a console port on the Sega CD, I think. But I'm pretty sure like this is kind of credited as creating the genre. Really? Yeah. See, I, I am not very knowledgeable about RTSs, so I mean that's. That's impressive that a console game would be considered a contender for first in genre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When, you we, know, it's, it's definitely thought of as a PC thing. It's been a very, yeah. very long time since I played this. I play, my friend 
uh, had this like when it came out, and we would play all the time. But he was very like strategy minded about everything. You know, he's a really big like risk player and stuff. So I always lost. But I mean, it's, I haven't played this game heavily since then. Just as an FYI. Yeah, I, mean, but... I played it, but not long enough to figure out how the hell it works. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's gonna take me a little bit of time to uh, get back into it. I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've seen video of the game before, but I never really quite knew what genre it was. Um, it's interesting. I mean, it's by uh, Technosoft, who would make the, uh, uh, what you might call it, the uh, Thunder Force games. Ooh. So you can order these units, and once they're ready, you pick them up. You can inhabit bases. Everything's happening at the same time. This looks um, a lot better than Dune 2. It's what? Just as, like, uh, it, it looks better than Dune 2, just, like, art, art-wise, and just, like, the colors are so vibrant, because I know I was playing a bit of Dune 2 for uh, a video we put out recently that we, we didn't end up using it, but it was just, like muddy as hell you mm -hmm. know just every like literally everything's just mud and, well i guess that's kind of the plot of dune slash so do you move this plane or whatever yeah, like yeah, that's can... the only thing that you move yeah and you pick up the yeah you the different units i think it's like attack the base uh like defend you know patrol um so you're commanding things to do different things yes i don't remember what all of them are though it's 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 probably going to be kind of like, I'm not going to do it too hot. This kind of reminds me of like Future Cop LAPD for the PlayStation 1. Had it, wasn't it sort of like an action real-time strategy situation where like you didn't have a cursor. You actually had a unit that you moved around and, and like it's basically this is a real-time strategy game except that you don't have a cursor. You have a, you have a, a character and a player that you're controlling. Like, like Pikmin, kind of. Oh yeah. I mean, Pikmin. Yeah, Pikmin. I mean, Pikmin is the only, if you want to call it an RTS. I, I know. I feel like people are reluctant to call any console game that's an RTS. Well, it's not really an RTS, you know, because yeah, because it's that's like that's a computer mouse. Basically. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm a console guy. I mean, yeah. You know, I, I don't have anything against PC. I just PC has never been what I've been passionate about, and. Um, I never, like, I, I really, I think Pikmin was the first thing like an RTS that I had ever played, and I loved it. Um, I loved, I mean, everything about that, even, you know, um, uh, early, early, early in the channel, I did a video um, about how much I like um, games that have, like, time limits or, like, time management aspects um, and because I really kind of like the, the pressure it puts on you. And I know a lot of people were like, oh, I've only got 30 days to beat Pikmin. I, I hate that. You know, it's so stressful, whatever. But, like, it just, like, really made me, like, get more into the game because I'm like, oh, crap. I, like, okay, and I start playing ahead. Like, well, I'm going to do this the next day, and then that will let me do this the next day. And, you know, playing ahead like that. And, you know, I, I've never played the game and, like, got anywhere close to you know, right out of time. So, I mean, I think it's completely fair. And in fact, I thought Pikmin 2, removing the time limit, um, really took a lot away from the game. And it just kind of, eh, you know, I mean, the mechanics are fine, but it doesn't have that little extra element that drew me in. I absolutely agree with you because I, I think that fundamentally Pikmin is so beautiful because it's about life and death and like survival, mm -hmm. like at its mm -hmm. core, like, you know, it's, it's about the circle of life. And uh, when they, in the second game, when they took that away and made it about like, oh, let's go get some treasure. It was just not, no, not We gotta get fun. ourselves out of debt. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wrong horse, we're gonna go bankrupt. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've been playing a lot of Pikmin 3. I actually was playing Pikmin 3 right before we got on. Grace is on that Pikmin 3. I'm all about Pikmin. Oh yeah, you just did a video about it. <laughs> yeah, we, I did. <laughs> and um, it, uh, I don't know, like, it, it, it's better because it does kind of emphasize this, like, whole, okay, we're here to save the lives of our planet, and then we have to, like, kind of manage resources, like, gather fruit so that we don't die. Yeah. But, yeah, I really wish it had that time limit because, like, again, like, I, I've been playing it kind of off and on, and I'm on, like, day 
32. Like, I haven't even found Olimar yet. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just, like, chilling out. But it kind of splits the difference a bit with the juice mechanic. Like, you have to get... Right. But, like, that's never really it's been... It's not hard. I feel though. like every time... Yeah, that, that's uh, the thing. Like, I remember, I remember when I was reading about the game before it came out, I'm like, oh, this is, like, this is a nice compromise between the first two games. You've got, you know, the... The stress, but, you know, you can also keep playing for a long time. But at the end of the day, yeah, like you say, it's not hard. Yeah. There's like never, there's like that, well, maybe I, I you, you've probably already passed the point of the game, but I, I probably won't spoil anything. There is like a part of the game where it's like all of a sudden like minimally stressful again. And then it's like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like shortly I after might... that, it's like not stressful anymore. You yeah, know what's okay. kind of interesting about Pikmin and Herzog's away here. I'm, I'm watching Corey play. Like, Olimar can get down if he wants to. He can bop stuff with his head. Hmm. And I noticed that, like, you know, you just turn into a, a, a normal mech and started shooting at dudes. And right. it's like, you can command your, your units to do stuff, but if you need to, you know, you can... You can do it yourself. Get, yeah, you do it yourself. And that, that's kind of, like, an interesting... Like, what, that, that seems like that should be some kind of, like, an offshoot subgenre of real-time strategy, whereas, like, a StarCraft... You know, you are just the pointer, and you you have to let your units do everything for you. <laughs> but what about these these real time strategy games where you can jump in there and you know get play. in the shit? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, Italian Wars as well. I think people commented on our video about that. I'm not as not as familiar I, with that game, but like I, I think, did not I did not enjoy Battalion. Wars. Oh, okay. I, there was also the Wii one too. I don't know if they've made any improvements on yeah, it. Yeah, I never I never played it just because I was so offended by the first one. <laughs> Even if they, even if they, I mean, you know, I, I don't know if they were trying to make it part of the Advance Wars series, um, but I mean, I think it was probably conceived as kind of a different thing because it was made by like a, a Western developer. Uh, I forget who made it, um, but yeah, I just, I could not enjoy that series. It was just like, I couldn't, I just, I couldn't manage uh, the, like, it just felt like, once I got, I forget how far I played into it, but once I got a certain ways into it, it was like they were just expecting too much from me at one time. Like there was like three or four or five things I needed to do and I couldn't figure out like how on earth am I supposed to like get all these things through this point and not die. And I just, I couldn't, I'm much more of a turn-based strategy fan. I mean, I'm not like a, a hardcore turn-based strategy fan but i mean i you know i really loved my advanced wars and fire emblem and uh, i never could get into the original final fantasy tactics but i like advance and a2 um that's kind of what i like what about the disgaea games and like i i am terrified of even <laughs> thinking about buying one of those because the whole fact that you can like level up every stat to like 9,999 or whatever the crap it is like I'm just like no I do not want to get involved with the game like, like that. I'm not strong I'm like not yeah. strong enough to resist this <laughs> <laughs> well I don't I don't know I think that's I mean I think that might be the case for a lot of people they're like oh no I have to max every stat and I won't be able to help myself but I'm more like this game is going to be expecting too much of me like I'm thinking like they're expecting me to get to level 9 million or else I can't beat the game, and I don't want to get to level 9 million. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, they might be a lot easier than I'm imagining, but I'm just, I'm imagining they've got, like, this crazy grind curve or something. I mean, that, again, that's completely without experience, and I'm probably judging unfairly, but... <laughs> uh, I think you can play those games forever. That's my understanding. I had, I had a friend who did play the first Disgaea for... Or this guy, I'm not sure how the connect person. Yeah. But he played it for several hundred hours, and I would go to his house, and he would go to some cave to grind, and then he would set up all of his dudes to do one round of attack. So we set it all up, and he would go to the kitchen to make dinner, because that's how <laughs> long it took for him to go through one turn. And I was like, dude, can you, are you beat this game? He's like, oh yeah, I could have beaten this game like probably 200 hours ago, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, that, that's like the kind of series that I'm never quite sure if the people who play them like them or <laughs> not. Is that, what is it? I think it's called Phantom Brave or something like that. What, it's There's a game that's like 
It's not called this guy, but I think it's part of the same series or at least yeah, yeah. basically the same gameplay. I think it's on PS2 and Wii. And a friend of mine played the Wii version. And like, I think he like 100% completed the game or, you know, at least put an obscene amount of time into it. And I like, I, I like, I always like, I'm like, you liked that game, right? He's like, no, I hated it. <laughs> I'm like, I, I thought I remember you played a lot of that game. I thought you liked it. <laughs> Isn't that like what addiction is? Like, <laughs> you don't like the drugs, but you need them. That's like literally what addiction means. Like, there's other games, man. You, it's like that's what I told my friend. Like, you know, they've they, they've kept making other games. We live in a great time. They, 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 they keep even making made video more games. Of this game. And every single time they make a new Disgaea, I'm like, do Disgaea players need more Disgaea to play? Aren't they still <laughs> trying to get a billion levels in the first one and the second one? Like, I think the fifth one or the sixth one is coming out on Wii. I'm sorry, no, it's like the Switch now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, you know, the Game of the Year edition with all extra stuff. You know, it's like Disgaea 5 plus. In case you... <laughs> I didn't need a plus in my Disgaea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm gonna go get a light real quick over here. Oh, sure, yeah. Corey, not to give you any kind of uh, pressure here, but there is apparently a Herzog's Way expert in the chat. Oh, you know... <laughs> I thought maybe it would be uh, uh, Mark Bustler from uh, uh, Classic Game Room. This is apparently his favorite game of all time. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. Red, Red Gems is saying that they were wishing they were in the room with you so they could, like, okay. kind of well, tell them it's backseat advice. I haven't, I haven't really played a hardcore in probably 25 years. Mm. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, this was, this was like a multiplayer statement. It was one of the very few times, you know, that it was, uh, you know, that we'd like play something competitive. You know, maybe this is why, like, I hate competitive games so much, is <laughs> because I'd always um, lose at this. Look, everyone, <laughs> look at everyone look at our cute dog. He's the Hi best dog. dog. <laughs> name is Launchpad, and he's the best dog ever. <laughs> it's a great name. He's upset because we're sitting on the couch and we've taken all the pillows away. Oh, but Grace just <laughs> spot. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, Corey. What were you, you were saying. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I just got to keep saying. You're, you're saying that this is maybe why you hate competitive games. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's very possible. <clears throat> I mean, I've never, like, I've never gotten into, like, fighting games and stuff. Like, I think I just don't have a competitive nature. And, like, the only games that I've ever been vaguely competitive at are kind of like Mario Kart. And I'm not, like, super amazing at Mario Kart, but I've always been able to hold my own with the people I play. Um, like, I've always been terrible at Smash Brothers. Um, I always prefer to play, like, Smash Brothers. And back in the day when I played, um, like, Perfect Dark, um, I preferred to play with, uh, play on teams. Like yeah. Perfect Dark, uh, uh, me and my friends always played uh, on on teams, and we fought against bots instead yeah. of fighting against each other. Like that was just way more fun to me. It was like I got really into a horde mode on Gears of War because it was a cooperative yeah. uh, game by, at, at its core, and it was like I, I think some of that competitiveness. Like it's, I'm not I'm not afraid to be competitive. It's just when you go online and the people that are playing online, they're always just like savage. And it's like, Ooh. I just don't have the 300 hours to get good at, to get so good at this game that I can really run with these uh, experts. Yeah. It, it just, that is just not fun for me. So um, yeah, Horde mode was, Horde, Gears of War 3 Horde mode was like my favorite game of the last console generation. Really? I mean, I, oh. I guess I played a little bit of competitive. Um, I mean, those, the first those series one. are good, but specifically that Horde mode was where I really kept coming back to it. Yeah, but it's co-op modes is where it's at for me. Yeah. Agreed. All right. I think I'm getting a little, good, a good defense here. Looks like you've got a bunch of dudes. So you're still you're still on the same, like, game that you started on. Oh, yeah. I mean, the games can it, last for a long time. I, I might even be playing the same game for... The entire time the whole stream okay so so really? is there is there like a campaign mode or do you just like yeah, I, play around i mean you do you play through the whole game but i think that huh. there's no like real story as far as i know 
Oh, I'm I'm sure the manual has has a, a very good story. That's true. Got to have reason for doing this. Yeah. Or is it just like are these skirmishes basically more or less just kind of custom games and then do they get harder? Like how how is the actual like how, how do you beat this game? Because this game still came out in the late '80s. And they there must be a credits sequence at some point, right? Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there, you could still run into games with no credit sequences even then, but it was getting rarer. Eh, maybe. Man, I don't know. I honestly has been long enough that I know that I played through every level as a child, but every uh, every map. Yeah. Right. So, so you consider this game beaten on your back? I do. Yeah. Do you guys like track your backlog and games you haven't beaten and stuff? Oh gosh. No, I just kind of <laughs> I got so deep into collecting that it was like, no, I don't I, I don't even worry about like actually beating games. I usually just kinda of think like, have I gotten my money's worth out of this or have I at least plugged it in to make sure the damn game works? <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I, I actually started a stream like show that was purely just my pile of shame stream just so I could finally Ooh. like have an excuse to play things. And then unfortunately I just had other commitments and couldn't keep going with it. But <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you have like a list that you get? Do you guys do that? Yeah. I mean, that's actually how we met originally was um, <clears throat> me and another friend. Uh, we made a website back in 07. It's called the backloggery. It's just backloggery.com. Oh God. And it looks, it looks, it looks, you know, kind of outdated a little bit at this point. And, uh, we're, we're working on a, a revamp of it, but um, it's, uh, or I shouldn't say we, because I'm not really doing much right now for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's all about, uh, it, you know, it's a collection tracking site, but it's really with more of a focus on, you know, I guess shaming yourself into thinking, oh my gosh, look how big games. I, I mean, some people say like, literally say, I'm afraid to sign up for this website because I don't, I don't want to know. Uh, how many games I have unbeaten. And I think most people usually end up with more than they even expect. Um, I, it, at one point, it was uh, 2008, I want to say. It was it 2008 or 2009? Corey, you always remember, because you tell me it was like the week before you got married. Yeah, it was when you beat your backlog. backlog. Well, it was it 2008 or The last game you, you had to finish was Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It was. Oh, um, hell of a game. So I, I beat my backlog. I had zero unfinished games of everything on my shelf. <laughs> I had Holy zero shit. unfinished games. And then, you know, and Corey was just a member of the site. And, you know, and we just met and became friends through that. Uh, but uh, I had zero unfinished games. And then, you know, you know, I was, you know, around, you know, floating between one and ten. And then you know you kind of, then I kind of start getting more into you know going to conventions and going to retro shops and then all of a sudden it's like z between it's like one, on the edge and of 20. one hundred and then Corey's like let's start a YouTube show and now every single game I look at I'm like ooh that's interesting I should have that because I might want to talk about that one day <laughs> and so now like for the past like two plus years i've been dancing with a hundred unfinished games <laughs> and i refuse like i've come up with all these crazy schemes to like keep myself under to, to no more than 99 unfinished games because i feel like if i cross a hundred like then what what's holding me back you know it's all it's all over so <laughs> you know I, I always like whenever like i finish an episode uh, you know, I'm always like just like so focused on that. But then I just like go on a game binge and just try to beat a few things because inevitably I'm going to end up buying something else soon. And, you know, pro probably the most extreme thing I did recently was after finishing, uh, I can't remember which episode it was, uh, whatever I released in April, um, I then just like. Like I disappeared from the internet because Persona Five just came out, and I didn't want, I didn't want, any, I didn't want to hear anything. I didn't want to hear what anyone thought. I didn't want to hear if anyone thought it was good, if it was 
bad. I didn't want to hear it. I just didn't want to hear anything. I wanted to pretend it didn't, <laughs> didn't exist. I wanted to pretend the internet didn't exist. And so I just unplugged, worked on the episode, did basically nothing else. That was done. And then I just like binged on Persona 5 and beat it in like two and a half weeks. <laughs> Isn't it funny how it's like you'll have this huge backlog of games and you're like, I don't have time. And then it's like Persona 5 comes out and you're like, all right, well, I have 500 hours. Of yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we we, we kind of did the same thing with, with Breath of the Wild as we just like, it was actually kind of funny because we, we ended up, uh, um, I, I think Corey told you guys about the Night Trap documentary we're, we're ready, getting yeah, ready to release. Uh, you know, Breath of the Wild came out like, two days before um, before our trip to California. And, you know, we ended up kind of with, with more spare time on our hands than we than we had originally envisioned when we went to California. So we're just like sitting in our Airbnb playing Zelda on the Switch. Hell yeah, that's, that's why they made so the it was, Were you on the toilet? <laughs> Did you move from the toilet to like the porch of your Airbnb? Like I, no. I, it was actually I, like a kind I, of a cooler experience than just playing on the toilet, I think, at least. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I do not, I, I have not gone so far as to play video games on the toilet. I've, I, 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 I'm afraid to cross that line. I'm, I'm just trying to say, man, I'm not tr- trying to, to, I just want to I just get busy living. That's all I'm trying to say, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've talked about on our stream before. People are probably sick of us talking about, but it was like the coolest. It ended up being like the coolest way to play Breath of the Wild is like two people on handheld switches in the same room being like, "Oh, did you find like I found like this this fairy over here? I found this like really weird looking rock, and it's like like ooh, you should check this out. Oh, where is that? You know, it was like it didn't feel like spoilers because the game wasn't linear. Like we were just like sharing information. Like, you know, you would have playing the original game back in in the eighties, you know? So it was like a very, you know, it it ended up being like the best situation to play that game. in. even though I was initially kind of bummed out, like, I'm going, I'm going to have to travel like two days after the switch comes out, boo. And, you know, and I'm not even thinking about like how, like, cause I've always preferred, I don't like handheld games because there are good games on handheld, but I always prefer the TV experience. Oh, and it me was too, really, I'm absolutely the same. It was really a totally different... It was eye-opening playing Zelda because it was like, I don't feel like I'm getting a lesser experience playing this game in my hotel room than I would if I was playing it on my TV at home. Like, it was really kind of a totally different thing. It was it was awesome. That's really cool. oh, a great game. No, while we were out there, we, we did uh, uh, visit someone's house who played. Uh, we got to see them play a little Zelda on a, what, what was it, like a 103-inch projector screen? Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> it, it, it looked good. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then you played uh, Rescue Rangers on it. I did. I, I beat Rescue Rangers on a 103-inch projector screen. Disney Afternoon Collection, or no, it, was, it, was, it was before it was out. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, it was on an ABS, I think. Oh, that's, okay. That's the first game I ever beat, and some people were just like, "You should play Rescue Rangers on this giant screen." I'm like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't gotten that. Like, I'm. I, I still like keep holding out hope that they're going to make a, a physical release of that. Like, I, I've oh. got. Uh, I've got the Famicom versions of um, uh, Rescue Rangers 2 and DuckTales 2 because they're, they're, they're kind of expensive now, but... DuckTales 1 is my, like, Famicom white whale. I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? The, the first DuckTales game. Oh, is, is the first one, like, hard to get? It's like, I think it costs, like, 80 bucks. Yeah, around it's that. just expensive. It's, it's just expensive. Yeah. yeah, it's more that I'm willing to spend on it right now, especially since I am saving up for a Switch and all that. And it's yeah. just kind of like, I would yeah. get it mostly as a, a prop for the set. Yeah. You know, I don't even have a Famicom, so it's kind of hard to just. <laughs> well, I have, I, have a, I have a converter for a Super Nintendo if we really, Oh, stop. So if we wanted to play. <laughs> um, <laughs> just share the word, girl. You know, I'll hook you up. Oh, shit. I got you. <laughs> but, uh, but there was a time where. 
DuckTales 2 and uh, Rescue Rangers 2 were like, the, the Famicom versions were like 35 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I got them. Are they expensive when now? They were, uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they're. I mean, last I looked, I thought they were at least like eighty, maybe. Yeah. Um, People are still but, sleeping on Famicom collecting. It the prices haven't gone through the roof yet, but it's some, still. Some have gone up though. I mean, there's there's a few that I'm disappointed I don't have. There there was like this one game that um uh, <laughs> there there was this one game that I, I saw this video of like probably back in like. 07 or 08 or something i saw this this video um and it was just like this bizarre super bizarre goofy looking famicom game and it actually looked really fun it was like this platformer and you were this like robot and i think it had like a few different styles of level i'm like i, I can't like think of the words to type into google to figure out what game this was and i just couldn't figure out and actually, while we were in California, again, we visited someone else's house, and he had some Famicom games that he was like, I've got a list of Famicom games that I want you guys to try. And I'm like, okay, I like, I like Famicom. <laughs> and w it was one of them. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this game I've been looking for for years. Was it like Cocoron, maybe? Huh? Co is Cocoron the one where you no, play? No, it wasn't Cocoron, but... no. But it was, I, I finally found out the name, is Roboco Wars. Oh, Is it that okay. weird Konami crossover game? Uh, yeah. No, no, that's uh, my world. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob I can't think of who made Roboco Wars, but I'm like, yes! I've been looking for this game forever. And then I go on eBay, and it's eighty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, here, here, I thought it was just like this this obscure Famicom game no one cared about, and but uh but yeah but you know it, it, it seems pretty good so I, I don't know i mean i i i can talk myself into 80 dollars famicom games every now and then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually i don't think i've done that for famicom yet but i have done a, a couple of super famicoms that expensive oh yeah i think for a, for a hot minute right as nintendo and super nintendo games started increasing in value uh you know around like you know early youtube days when retro you know, videos were starting to become really big. Uh, it was like, oh, if you just get the Japanese version, it's way, way cheaper. And I think for a hot minute, that was a very reliable way to get some super rare games. But I think yeah. that is that's that that's going away now too. Yeah, mm -hmm. not not completely, but but to a large extent, yeah. I mean, I just picked up um, while I was at too many games. You know, a friend asked me, uh, could you pick up the Japanese version of Mario RPG? And you know, and that's still like ten bucks. Oh shit! What? Nice. Well, of course, I mean, if you can't read Japanese, then, you know, that's that's not really a viable way to play, especially when the original translation is, like, so good. Yeah, that story was all right. There's some, there's some funny, there's some great dialogue in that game. Yeah, I mean, that was okay. like... Yeah. But Bosh, I, I've been spreading the gospel of Boshi to my friend group Man, this people week. Don't, people don't know about Boshi. People sleeping on Boshi. <laughs> they, don't know. they don't know about Boshi, or, or they just don't care? They don't, oh, no. No, no, they... They wish they knew. They wish they knew. <laughs> it, it's, listen, it's, it's, there's no don't care. So you just know what you don't know. <laughs> I mean, so hey, I, 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 I always, I always thought that she was good. I mean, that's like, that's like my favorite version of like the Mario universe. Like, like I want to play like a normal Mario yeah. platformer in that version of the world. Yeah. Congratulations, Corey. You, you I mess them up. Y'all, yeah. I like when it player says, when it says like if it's a human or a computer player, it says brain. Brain face. <laughs> so either a, oh brain a user brain. Or bot. <laughs> the four food groups. <laughs> it's also funny, I think that Boshi is um, the only like canonical time that you've seen a, a Yoshi's feet. So that you actually really? they look. Yeah, I was talking with someone about Twitter um, about that like recently, and I and we were trying oh, to figure so... out you know how his his nails his toenails are super long, and we were just trying to figure out like do all Yoshi's have like crazy claws or is he just like uh, uh, it's you know, been so long since I've looked at a picture of Boshi and I, I want to get reacquainted now because <laughs> I do not remember. Oh my gosh, you do see his feet. So there's yeah. <laughs> there's four very variants of each map. And as you beat them, they become like dimmed in the uh, 
and the continue screen. Oh, there, there's okay. a password though, so you got to keep track of your password to know how many oh, okay, levels you've okay. beaten. But you see how like the A here is is dimmed because that's what I beat. Yeah, I mean it looks like there's as much stuff to do here as like Famicom Wars, which is going to be like yeah. my longest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid of uh, th th this is why it's bad that I like to uh, beat my backlog because of Famicom Wars. That's that's a problem. <laughs> so do I want to play uh, Vulcan or Waldung? I like Waldung. I like yeah. the sound yeah. of Waldung. Yeah. yeah. All right. How, how could Waldung be bad? <laughs> Though I do like Os, which is just bass with an O <laughs> instead of a B. You can't. You can't just change one of the letters. <laughs> On you, Herzog's wise. This so this level looks a lot like the last level. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lava level. I mean, there's. Yeah. They all have like different things about them, but I mean, you know, it's 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 pretty early Genesis when you think about it. I mean, this is this is like launch window probably. Yeah, I mean, I forget how long it was between uh, uh, between the Japanese Mega Drive release and the American release. Maybe a, a, was it a year? Like Genesis came out here, like what eighty eight? No, it was eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. Eighty nine. So I, I think, I think Japanese it was August of eighty nine. Oh really? So yeah. yeah, I think it was Japanese was eighty eight, but gosh, you know I'm really. It was right. August of eighty nine, and then um, Japan October of eighty eight. Okay. Got okay. my got my, my cell right. phone. <laughs> Remember when video game systems came out in August? I know I love for... you know summer releases. You know I, I think it was cool that the Switch came out, you know in in March. In March? Which is, is, is yeah, kind of, it's a weird great. time to launch a console, but I love the idea because I mean. Did it wasn't it the same with like the Super Nintendo? Didn't that come out like Super in the summer? Super Nintendo, I did not know it at the time, but it came out on my birthday. Oh, so it was August too. So it was. Yeah. Well, and I think it, part of that is because I think that fundamentally the audience for video games has changed. Mm -hmm. Just like maybe, may possibly like people were targeting the summer in the U.S. because that was you know when kids weren't at school Ooh. maybe they had more time to of course play that's games. like right when you're about to go back to school yeah i guess it depends about. on where you are in the country yeah but uh, now now video games are more for know you know grown-ups it's big kids yeah. stuff now so yeah yeah they gotta, it, who all have their own money to you know yeah you know and get it i mean the thing i the thing i like about it, honestly is like i feel like if you release something not in October, not in November, not in December. I feel like that is like a show of confidence. That's like, that's like, yeah, this, the, you know what? It's done. I'm not just releasing this because I'm trying to get into the the sales season window. This, yeah, it's done. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'll need to wait another few months to release it. I don't know, but yeah. I don't think the Switch was done. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. I mean, there was, I mean, Zelda was, Zelda was, ready i mean that i feel like i mean there, well i mean yeah it got a little more optimized uh maybe a month or so down the road but i mean i feel like i don't feel like the game i don't feel like there was anything they left out of it like it didn't it didn't feel unfinished in any capacity but i mean yeah i mean there's definitely some things that they could have released and i guess there ended up being some some a few hardware concerns in terms of scratching and stuff like that but you know all things considered i mean i don't you know get don't get me wrong i am happy as can be that the switch is is doing well but i don't quite understand like I, everyone's talking about like how well the switch is doing yeah nintendo's like off on on the right foot this time and i'm like I don't know the Wii. I, I like the Wii U too. Like I don't, I don't, I don't quite see what they are doing right, so to speak. I mean, I, I'm perfectly happy with what they're doing. I mean, I'm always going to. I mean, Nintendo systems are just like the given for me. Like I just, I always have to have it. They're always going to have Nintendo games. So I, yeah, yeah. But I mean, so far, you know, the the biggest games are games that you can play on another system. Uh, so it's kind of crazy to me that people are all like, yeah, Nintendo's got all this momentum right now. They're doing great. And the, and the Wii U never had that. And maybe it was just purely perception of what the system was. Mm -hmm. And 
maybe the fact that you can play Wii U games on the Switch is a big selling point because maybe a lot of people didn't have a Wii U. Yeah. Um, but it's it's just it's it's it is just interesting to me. I've never fully connected the dots on you know why is it that people are you know gravitating so much to the Switch. I mean, I know I will. Of course, I will. But I don't see necessarily what it is other than maybe the portability factor is really a large appeal uh, or maybe people were just ready for something new. Um, but I, I haven't quite seen why. What, I, well, I did they I'm... do right other than not call it we something else? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that Nintendo, by releasing all these mobile games, has been doing like great things for their brand in terms of bringing mm. in like reminding people that hey Mario exists and you had fun playing it. So and like I know that I bought um, the newest Pokemon game based solely on the fact that I really had a ton of fun with Pokemon Go. Mm. And I like it was the first Pokemon game I'd played since like a uh, Silver or, or mm. well Crystal. Yeah, the best <laughs> but one. The best one. You can play as a girl in that one, so it's the best one. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's... we did like you know Mario Run was like on was like downloaded like a billion times, and though like I think it, they actually I only ended up came out. Yeah, most yeah. of the people that got it only played you know I... the first level. Okay, and then... real quick, oh. I one hundred it. Did you actually? <laughs> That's embarrassing. Did you actually? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> oh, okay, because I know you were really close on those black. Um, no, I did it, and then points. I immediately deleted it off yeah. my phone. Okay. <laughs> get this out of my life. Okay. All right, <laughs> get it off the yeah, get it off the bucket list. Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> I will be interested, though, you know, talking about, you know, Nintendo sort of refamiliarizing people with their brand through the mobile stuff. It will be interesting to see if Mario Odyssey does, like, exceptionally well, because now people are all like, yeah, you know, Mario was fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, the people the people who forgot, I never forgot. Yeah, we've been researching the uh, Red Ring of Death and then what really brought that up. And, and really the story of the Red Ring of Death is uh, just how badly Microsoft wanted to bury Sony and then how badly Sony botched the launch of the PS3. Well, yeah. like, yeah, they wanted to get out first on the holiday 2005 for the Xbox 360. They but like they wanted that brand recognition. They want to be the first one out there. But like, yeah, those models, like all of them were like garbage. They, they, they were all crappy. They ended up extending the warranty for those all 2005 manufactured another year and then they were so focused on trying to uh kick kick sony when they were down that like they didn't apparently didn't even really under they did we're not aware of how bad the red ring of death and how faulty their units were until 2007 yeah. when they stopped production and they were kind of like all right we, we, we got a handle on sony no one cares about this nintendo we think that's not going to do nothing and so then <laughs> they did, like reconvene and they spent a billion dollars uh over the next three years after 2007 extending warranties and replacing xbox 360s um and the crazy thing is that like at the end of the day like somehow that did not destroy the xbox brand the yeah xbox one is yeah. the thing that destroyed the xbox brand but like it's just that go get him cory but it's like <laughs> It, it's the weird thing is you kind of look at the 360 and you think like man they totally fucked up the 360 but Ooh. actually they didn't it was the right thing to do maybe um and i think like a lot of the people that were involved in that story uh have they've moved on from microsoft but they're all like yeah no like we we protected the brand we protected the consumer even though we made a crappy system even though the system itself it was a good system but you know the red ring of death is like the, is probably the most well-known malfunction in you know video game malfunction i would, I would say so i mean the, the 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 yellow light on the playstation 3 i mean certainly happened a lot but it, it yes. wasn't iconic no no, no. Right. i mean I, it doesn't have its own like hashtag <laughs> yeah. i don't you know? think it has its own wikipedia page people will you know? never <laughs> forget about we'll never yeah, forget like the red that, and, and the blinking red the blinking red light of death on the original front loading nes those are like the two um probably most well known but like in both of those instances both of those brands did such a good job of being a good brand and mm -hmm. getting out there to the public. I mean, it was like, uh, I think it was uh, Obama in 2009 said, we got to get the kids off the Xbox. And the, the important thing about that is he was using Xbox as a catch-all for it's video. generic, yeah. Yeah, and it was like, so like, that's the thing is like, you know, when a politician or somebody on TV just 
uses you as a catch-all. When that, you become the yeah. Kleenex of whatever. You yeah. Are. yeah. Back when you know when it's every video Nintendo. game system was the was Nintendo. The Nintendo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was actually don't play video games or play Nintendo, and I was like that was sort of the thing. Is for a while, I was like, oh yeah. You know, you know, her kids are always just oh they're playing the Xbox. They're always just up there playing Xbox all the time, you know. And it's like, yeah, actually, it's Nintendo Wii, mom. When when well, your you know, when your system is like the name for every video game system that's available at the time. Exactly, and the, and that's kind of like the fascinating thing is like, it was the Xbox One, it was the Kinect, and that always online and like the Xbox One when it launched wasn't necessarily a bad system, but like the messaging and was just was yeah. so wrong. And the branding was so wrong. And the fun thing about studying how Microsoft went after the PS3 is then you study that that uh, E3 reveal for the Xbox One and the PS4, you notice how savagely Sony went after Microsoft. It's yeah. just when like the 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 uh, YouTube video of like how to lend games on a PS4, and one guy's like, "Hi, yeah, thanks." <laughs> and it's just like this thirty second video, but you know that was just savage. Yeah, like that video yeah. got like that when video went viral, and I was like, yeah. You're "Done." Sorry, Microsoft, you lost. Yeah, that was, they screwed that up so bad. And, you know, something that, that I keep thinking after this year's E3 is, you know, I think a lot of people were disappointed that the Scorpio became Xbox One X. And, you know, now people are like, well, that's going to be, did, did you think about the fact that S and X sound very similar? But, uh, I, I can't help but think Microsoft, even though I understand why they have to go that route, because, you know, people are kind of speculating, well, Microsoft is probably going to go for this iterative console approach now. And what I think is going to happen, I think that the next Xbox after Xbox One X, I think will be iterative in the sense that it will probably still play all of the Xbox One games, but they're going to break out of that family and they're going to be exclusive games for that system but in terms of hardware construction i think it's going to be an extension of that but i think that they must be so frustrated that yeah. they are stuck with that xbox one thing because think about it the xbox one name is all about that original vision of the oh it's the one box that you need under your tv it's going to do everything and all your tv for you and no <laughs> one gave a crap about that and so xbox one means nothing in terms of what uh microsoft wants us to perceive the system as being today it means nothing but they're stuck with that they're stuck having nothing. to use that xbox one language and the visual language of the systems and and making them sort of the same thing but you know i, I mean i ho hopefully uh, you know they they recover to some extent uh and you know i i think they will i think the fact that that xbox one x will put them on the techno on the lead in terms of technology again i think that will at least earn back you know something for them but you know, they they screwed up from the beginning, and now they're stuck with this stupid name. So, ironically, the kind of the failure of the Xbox uh, One is doing a lot of great things for retro gaming fans because um, I think since they don't have have those killer apps to draw people to their system, they're really doubling down on, on their old library. Mm, and yeah. for example, in the interesting case of the like Red Ring of Death, you know these. Um, Xbox 360s all have basically a, like, you know, the NES, Derek still has his, like, top loader from, yep, that someone works. got him in, like, 94 or, or whatever. My parents got me for my 10th birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, but um, our, like, for, we had a 360 that just broke recently after, like, eight years of having it. And so, and it was just, like, so sad because I was getting into playing Prey and I was just, you know, we got Ooh. we bought beautiful Katamari, and we're like, yeah, let's do this. And I then finally was playing Dead Rising, and I don't yeah. know why I was sleeping on that game for so long. It, that might have been what broke. <laughs> yeah. <ironic. laughs> but it it was just it's kind of neat. I know that the support isn't for every single game, but in a weird way, for all these 360s that are going to break, you know, within the next few years, it's it's kind of cool that the Xbox One will have some sort of support for. Yeah. It. Yeah, so, and and the crazy thing about it too is you know emulation. You know, generally, you know, it's like, well, it's still better to play on the original hardware, but there's actually a lot of people saying that 
the Xbox One is the better way to play a good number of the 360 games that are available for it. It, it plays them faster. It plays them awesome. better. Uh, so it's it's kind of crazy. And supposedly the Xbox One X is going to continue that where it's like, well, if there's headroom for these games to perform better, they will. Just inherently, and they've got like, you know, certain graphical effects like the 16x anisotropic filtering that's going to be on all backwards compatible, backwards compatible 360 and original Xbox games. I'm, I'm really interested to see how that, how that plays out. I don't have an Xbox One. I've kind of been like, well, you know, whenever they do their mid-generation refresh, that's when I'm going to get it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I know it's $500, but I, I am. Uh, I, I, I've kind of already committed myself to buying it because I've already bought some Xbox, a, a few Xbox One games for cheap. I have <laughs> nothing to play them on, and it's like, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely buying the better system, even if it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> slowly taking this guy's, this guy's basis <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, I want to, I want to check in and see what's going <laughs> on because I. It, it's honestly, um, thank, thank you for playing this game. I think, uh, but a little behind the scenes, um, Corey was like, "Hey, what game should we play on the stream?" And I, and I was like, "Well, we've been doing a lot of RTS uh, videos lately. If you want to check into that?" And it was just, um, I, I know that these are kind of hard to play on stream because they are just such a like a chill, you know, experience where you just set them up and then knock them down. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, you, on. well, go on, go on. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Corey, give us a little play-by-play. That's so good about that. I'm just, I'm trying to take out all of his bases one by one. I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of, you know, it's obviously like on the easiest level right now. Uh, so I am, he's flying around, so I'm dropping, uh, like building a whole bunch of the missile launchers that can attack him when they're, uh, when he's flying around in the plane, plane form. Nope, but he's attacking my base right now. I don't know, he sent somebody at my base. Do you feel like the rust is wearing off? Do you feel like you're settling back into it, to it like the old days? <laughs> probably not, no. Uh, it'd probably take me a little while to get back to that. But, I mean, my friend was so competitive with it that we would play, you know, for so long. We'd give each other enough time to uh, build up our defense and everything, and then we would start. Ooh. And with this, you kind of, you know, you can, you can go straight for the attack, like, for the base if you wanted to which is so uh, what, probably not so the best sweet. thing to do obviously co-op game is, is it co-op yeah yeah so you can play it split screen you can play it split screen but it's just one-on-one -on -one. It's, it's it's two players only i mean uh, okay. against each other which would be cool though if you could could play a split screen i mean it's split screen like co-op in some way against like a third or because one of the when I play StarCraft, we love to play you know co-op on the same side, and uh, against like two computers online. It'd be cool if you could do this, but I guess it's just you know it's just too early. Well, you get yourself a copy of StarCraft 64. Yeah. You do split screen. That way, you can do one on one with your friend, and you can screen look. Oh yeah. And I tell you, it changes the dynamic of 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 what you're doing when you know your opponent can just. Look up and see what you're doing. <laughs> yep. Oh man, that's see that's the, that's the hardest part about it, I guess, with with this stuff, you know, being able to see what they're doing. I, I think StarCraft 64 is like kind of expensive these yeah, days. Yeah, it's an expensive game, it and it, it's it's really it's really well done, I think. It's... Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say like, you know, it, as elitist as people can be about RTS games on PC, like I I've heard plenty of people say it's actually a really good version. But you can get the PC version for free on Blizzard's website right now, and they're yeah. remastering it in uh, in August. And so it's like, there's no practical reason. <laughs> there's no real reason. Unless to... you're just an N64 collector. Yeah, and yeah. and I love it. I think it's it's I, I love games that are just like this shouldn't exist, but I love that it exists. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of my favorite, my kind of personal like favorite dumb games. I just got a. Yeah, Warcraft I mean, two I, mean I, I think N64 1. had a number of those. Like Resident Evil 2 is a really good example of that. Yeah. I just got a copy that of Warcraft 2. Things uh, that are in that ver version too. So if you are like a Resident Evil super fan, like actually owning the N64 version, you get you gotta own it because they have the item randomizer. 
Um, yeah, I, that's like the I think other than the Windows version, that's like the only version of Resident Evil Two I don't own yet, and I don't know why. Like I'm a big N64 fan, and I don't know why it's taken me like that long, so long. Uh, I was actually looking at a copy of Too Many Games, but the vendor was kind of a jerk, and like they were like everything was like priced way too high, and they were firm on their prices, and I was just like, mm-hmm. you're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> What did you guys end up getting at Too Many Games? Oh, um, I got Quake for the Saturn. That was my big, uh, big get that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get for a video because I, Saturn emulation has just not been reliable enough for me, or it has yep. just been. I have, I have forgetting footage and really playing the game. I just felt like Saturn emulation hasn't quite gotten there yet. So I, I kind of have taken back to collecting Saturn games. And so uh, that was kind of like the last first-person shooter for that system that I really, really wanted to get my hands on. Mm-hmm. I think Corey, you didn't you get a uh, what, what, like Quake Two for PS One or something? Yeah, yeah. Great port. That's a great port. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it has no, you know, you can't dual analog it, can you? Because it has totally customizable controls. Could you assign things to the uh, well, to the right you analog? Can play, you can do mouse and keyboard style yeah. in fact if you, if you if you have four mice yep. and two multi taps you can do four play split screen multiplayer with everyone out having a mouse and a controller <laughs> wow yeah it's it's crazy you know, i heard uh are you guys familiar with a uh, digital foundry yeah, yeah yes yeah um because i just i heard john linneman talk about it um I, 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 you ever watched like the stuff that he does or not like the stuff like the df retro the retro stuff not not a ton like i i we we support them or no no we haven't uh seen i, I guess whenever a new release comes out i always check in to be yeah. like okay what's the difference between crash one and then the like, crash oh, they, they did yeah. a blaster master video they did, did they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean i've seen a handful of their videos they do a lot of content but they, you know the, the digital foundry is some quality stuff for sure yeah randomly i mean he it's funny because he lives john lives in uh germany it, but last uh December, you know, we had been talking to him um, about some stuff, and he's like, you know, we wanted to have him on the stream, <laughs> and he's like, you know, I'm going to be in the U.S. in December, and we said, okay, okay, so you could be on the stream then. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where I live. Somehow, <laughs> like, Cincinnati has become like this crazy like hub for uh, like the retro game scene. It's pretty pretty wild. <laughs> it's all this random stuff like like John D from Retroware. Mm-hmm. Uh randomly taking a vacation and like randomly taking a vacation to a block away from where I live. <laughs> 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 like I saw that he was going to Cincinnati uh like on his Facebook on Friday or Thursday. And I said, "You know, I live here. You want to get together?" And he's like, "Well, I'm actually not in in Cincinnati, I'm going to be a little south in Kentucky, like right across the river. And I'm like, oh, well, that's where I live, you know. I always say Cincinnati because, you know, like I don't usually say I live in Kentucky. Well, I, mean, <laughs> it, I mean, you can it's, see downtown Cincinnati, so it helps people visualize a little better. Right. Uh, but he said, you know, like I'm going to be there. I said, you know, I live there. He's like, I'm going to be in Kentucky. I'm like, okay, well, where? And he's like, uh, Newport. I'm like, that's where I live. And I gave him my address, and he's like, I am staying a block away from where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Randomly, like, out of nowhere. So he, like, came over today and hung out for a little bit. <laughs> so random. You know, it's, it's a pretty big guy. Uh... I actually saw the picture of that on Twitter, and I was just like, that's weird. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, no, well, I didn't even have context of that. You, all, you and your wife just kind of, like, just like randomly picked that area like oh, for where you want to move from new york and it just like ended up being like in terms of like your retro like your retro game presence and the the scene there like it's it just ended up being like the perfect place it's like it's really ridiculous yeah i mean the guy who's doing night trap lives five minutes away from me somehow uh that's how that happened <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's it, you know, I just like the whole putting together of that is like almost like winning the lottery because of randomly just like lives down the street. 
Uh, it's going to be getting like an awesome arcade. Like, yeah, an ar- ar- arcade slash uh, retro game store is like opening up five minutes, mm-hmm. like walking distance from me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's somebody who, you know, is like he has another two other stores. I sold him a I had a Space Harrier arcade cabinet and I sold it to him and he put it in his uh, his bar edition of, of that store. <laughs> And uh, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy the way everything's kind of worked out. So how many uh, conventions a year do you guys tend to go to? Not many. Probably uh, three, really. Like uh, so what, what, what what were like your favorite ones? The Portland Retro Gaming or PRGE is probably my yeah, favorite. That's person. the one we want to go to the probably the most. I think it's 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 a nice. It's a really nice convention that's a bus ride away. Yeah. And for Ooh. me, because uh, I lived in, we, we met in Alaska and like lived there for many years. So I used to just really go to one convention and it was, uh, I used to go to MAGFest on the East Coast and, you know, all the way to basically just outside of DC um, from Anchorage, Alaska was a, was a hell of a travel. And I just got really tired of airline travel. And even though we went to Philly, um, you know, just last month. I was still kind of like, man, I just don't like being on an airplane for super, super long. <laughs> so personally, it's just, I'm biased to Portland, if only because it's like we, we, we can make a day trip out of it. You know, and it's like two hour bus ride. Buses are never quite that full. They had this and- amazing ar- arcade game the like the first time we went where I don't even remember what it's called maybe you guys know but oh God, yeah. it was like a a weird game where you you get on it and you're basically like riding like pedaling on a bicycle except um, inside of the game you are like flying this weird dirigible helicopter kind of thing. <laughs> it's weird, like, sounds you know, like something a game day would like he's like really awesome. into like bike bike games i think i, I like waited pedal. i think you, you actually i think that was when you broke your shoe Oh the, yeah, the, I broke my dance goes. The buckle on, that. The buckle <laughs> on, on your that shoe chain. broke. And we Worth had to, it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go to a convenience store and buy some uh, <laughs> super glue just to like make that shoe work mm. function for the rest of the weekend. But oh man, it was so great. Yeah. <laughs> and they they have a lot of stuff, and then it's fun because they have a really good uh, set of YouTube people who go, so you kind of yeah. get to see all all your your friends and stuff so yeah that's that's one of the things we like about too many games yeah Yeah. that was our first time coming and it was really great just to like see people and of course we like met you guys which Mm -hmm. was awesome and yeah that's the best part of uh uh, these conventions yeah like uh, also like you know mentioned game dave a minute ago like just ran into him randomly and i was just like hey you know, and I, I gave him a thumbs up because he had a joke in his Mega Man Six video that I thought was really funny. And it was just, like, <laughs> and it was just like, yeah, just like fucking everyone's just there. And that, that was kind of like the neat thing about doing Magfest for for me. I did Magfest uh, five years in a row, and the fifth year was like, man, I'm I can't do this anymore. This is, I, yeah, this is a, well, yeah, that's that's kind of where we're, we're at actually this year. But ourselves. like for the yeah. first four years though, it was a lot of fun, and you know, you get to meet people, you get to party, and but also it, it's kind of fun. I don't know if you've had this moment where like a bunch of bunch of homies are on a hotel room and we just start trading horror stories, just like start trading battle stories about doing this YouTube bullshit, you know? Yep. <laughs> like, just weird people you meet online and you know, just kind of the the weird things that the, the crazy <laughs> lives that we lead doing this strange uh occupation and uh that's always like a fun, fun therapeutic exercise. Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, that's kind of... It's, it's, I explode on these stories. Oh, like, oh, God, I'm not alone. There's other people that I can relate to and talk about weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it was with us. Like, we, we've we been several years in a row. I think we've been, like, five years in a row, but I think I this think is the first year right. we're really considering not going. Yeah, well, so, I think it's because, like, a, a lot of the... <clears throat> you know, like like I said, uh, you know, we, we met through the, the backlogger community, and that was you know what we started going for and we had you know like we we had like 20 to 30 people like you know very active members in the community like you know pretty much just hanging out and that was a lot of fun and a a lot of people this past year just couldn't make it and it felt like it was like the first year of magfest where it was like this year was not as good as last year and 
so now it just and you know and there are some other friends that are maybe thinking about not going so i feel like i feel like magfest needs a break for a year or two i mean i would absolutely like to go again but just i feel like too many games has just been a lot more fun lately so that's yeah. you know that's kind of become our our main convention we're we're and, going and buying to, games uh, at at uh magfest you know there's only like three major vendors and you go to something like yeah. too many games and there's so many vendors and that's like one of my absolute favorite things to do at a convention is buy games <laughs> um you know yeah. I, I i know people say you know oh comp prices are high but you can you know you can haggle with people you, you can get some deals you know if you look yeah. but yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't have that disposition. Like, I, I'm just. I'm just like, oh, it's this much. Okay, thanks. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I don't have that naturally, but like, I, I, I've hung out with enough friends who, who are like, look, man, you, you gotta haggle. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's taken me some time, but, but I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. You know, you, you got. Well, the, the trick is. You know, you withdraw your money from the... Yeah, I mean, you have to pay cash. You have to pay cash. You withdraw your money from the bank before you go. And then, you know, on your way there, you know, you stop and buy a candy bar with a $20 bill. Or you pay a toll with a $20 bill. And you get your ones and your fives and your tens. You, you got to have... You got to be like, I think I can add these things up. And you got to, like, have the right money denominations. And just be like, this is what I got. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try something. I'm trying gonna try and be a dick here, like with the. Uh, I'm gonna build so many of these. I got this base right next to the main base, and I'm gonna build these missile launchers. That will, I'm gonna set them all down at the same time, so hopefully it will kill him as soon as he spawns every time. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you how it well works. You are really close. I mean, it's a two for two right here. Thought yeah, but just... I mean, I think I just because I'm playing on the easiest level. Oh, I died though. Oh. It's okay. Hubris. <laughs> yeah. So is it just pure respawn? I mean, you don't have like a limit to how many times you can respawn. Right. Yeah. There's there's no limit. I feel like sometimes it's taking you longer to respawn. Though is that is there anything that? I think is... you know you gotta wait for your energy to restore. Sometimes when you uh, when you spawn. Because you, you can only fly for total... so long before you run out of your fuel, runs out. I, I wonder when the term respawn like became entrenched in the gaming vernacular because I I don't recall like you know back when uh, back in like the golden eye and perfect dark days I mean me and my friends we didn't say respawn back then. My theory is that it comes from Doom. Uh, yeah, because I think spawning was like the devil term. Spawn. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, there's like the well, devil. well, there's no telefragging. Demon. Was... <laughs> telefragging. I was. I don't think those. No, literally, it's like when when you when you came into a level, like they just said they spawned in. That was like the. Mm. And I, they, I think that was just maybe a term <clears throat> somebody from the software pulled out of yeah. the. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I mean, so so it was used in the game. So, but I don't think it had like quite spread to be like ubiquitous at that point, or yeah. at least not among my group of friends. Like I don't think I started hearing the term spawn until, you know, probably. Um, maybe maybe even not until um, oh, geez, Xbox 360, lose. PS3 days. I'm you know, with the uh, uh, console online uh, becoming common. Actually, actually though, no. I, oh, I probably... geez, I'm like really dead here. I'm, oh no! Yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bummer. Only really too close to the sun. Yep. Oh, Winner shit. two player side. Oh well, it's okay. It's all right. Oh, uh, plays the sad music. <laughs> it's so many more bases. Oh, it has so many more units and yeah. more body. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if the body is like how many uh, like actual player characters died, like the, the one you control. Because he died a lot. <laughs> oh, man. man. What are your thoughts on General Chaos now? Oh, General Chaos is a great game. Uh, yeah. But it's been a very long time since I played it. Very long. I still have my uh, my four player adapter though. <laughs> I don't have the game though anymore. Oh no, too bad. I know, and it's kind of it's kind of pricey these days, isn't it? Was it really? Okay, well, I'm glad I scooped it up when I did. Yeah, it's it was a good game. I mean, that was another one where we, you know, I'll play it together and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try Balkan this time. Maybe I I went for a, maybe Wall Dung was a little bit too high for my skill level. <laughs> uh, Couldn't. But, get 
Can you do? Yeah, I would like to see the lava. Level. Lava levels, do lava. Yeah, this is a great. I used this music in the uh, the uh, Genesis RGB episode. Oh, nice. That's probably one of the most fun things is like picking music for a video. <laughs> you always yeah, like I was. <clears throat> I, I'm I'm getting close to finishing. Well, maybe not close to finishing, but I'm I'm probably halfway through choosing music for my next video. I, I was working on literally just up until we started the the Skype call. Um, I, I'll go ahead and say what what it is. I'll, uh, can, can we say what this episode yeah, I'm working I think on that's is? Fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think we've said it before. Um, <clears throat> it's about uh, soundtracks. Like, it's not really, it's not really going to be so much about the music. But obviously, there's like, all, I mean, you know, since we put music under all of our videos, there's, you know, there, there's more music I would say than normal. But it's not really about. There's a few moments where it's like stop and listen to the music for it's a about bit. Like but, bootlegs and you know, like yeah, packaging. it's it's about. Yeah, it's about like the the sets themselves and just like, ooh, look at the cool artwork and the interesting packaging and the you know, sometimes the the art that they put on the discs is really clever and stuff and you know, I it's just I was kinda like just thinking like I think a lot of people like haven't seen this stuff or especially I think with some of the more recent releases, like you can get them pretty re uh, pretty easily on Amazon Japan. And I I think a lot of people might not even know that like you know a lot of people are releasing some, still releasing some pretty cool stuff. Like, especially Nintendo, I think, is surprising for a lot of people because they kind of got out of soundtracks for a while. And and now they're, like, releasing a lot of really good ones that you can just buy. It's not, like, locked behind Club Nintendo anymore and stuff. So, but yeah, anyway, so that's going to be interesting. And so, like, probably, like, a third to almost half of the video uh, we actually shot at Dave's house. Um, uh, so game there's game. A, there's we, a little... we stayed with him before we went to too many games. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, he, he lives, lives like, like an hour like, away, hour and a half away. Like an hour and a half away. So, um, so yeah, we, we when we stop by, we like to do a little little collab. Um, but yeah, so we you know we talk about like you know different print versions, and then uh, and then we talk about like bootlegs and. Stuff like that, you know. I would kill for a Katamari Damashi vinyl. <laughs> oh, it's got to be in the works. Fine. It's, it's like it I don't think it's ever been available, but oh, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got to be in the works. It's like it just seems like such a it's too, uh, too good of a soundtrack to yeah. not be be working on somewhere. Specifically, the first one, I think. Yeah, yeah more absolutely. so. Than... That's the only one. That, that's the only one that I like truly love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they got so caught up in the uh, like the side objectives, I think. Right. Well, to be honest, I think I've only really played the first two. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, 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 I always mean to like try one of the HD ones, but I just never got around to it. But like, the second game, like it was good, but it's like it became so much about like you know, collect as many sea creatures as you can. And, like, to me, in the original, like, those were just, like, side levels. But it was really all about just making the biggest frickin' Katamari you could. Like, those, that's what makes it was It was a raw me. experience the first yeah. time. Yeah, it was just so, like, out of left field. Like, the strangest game I'd ever played at the time. And it was just, I, I loved the concept of it's, like, a of just this scaling world that it just seamlessly scales with you from this tiny size. Like that kind of thing is just fascinating to me. I think that's, that's one of the reasons that you know, I know that like Xenoblade Chronicles X is a very, um, you know, controversial game. I don't know if maybe that's the word for it, but you know, people were disappointed that it wasn't, you know, uh, story driven like the first Xenoblade was. And, but I loved that game, and a large part of it was I just loved the technology that was oh, used geez, to build the world. Uh, you know, and the way that it just seamlessly scaled. You could be this tiny person to going into a mech to flying high above the world just completely same, seamlessly. And that, that, that kind of stuff just, just, I always loved that. You know, it all started with Katamari. Corey, you did it. 
You <laughs> saved the base. Save I did, but I'm getting too. Uh, you know, I just yeah, like, I, I, just, I'm like, I don't I'm, have the brain I'm, for it sometimes. You know, it's just like really what my problem is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like impressed that like you this. all are like following what he's doing as much <laughs> as you are because I'm just like staring blankly at it and talking about video games. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never played any of the Xeno Gear, Xeno, uh, I guess Xeno Saga games. No, no Xeno series. No, no. I, I know we, we have it for Wii. Yeah, for... I, pl I played the Wii one for a hot minute where I was just thinking like, I really want to play this game because it seems really good. And I just got so intimidated by it. I was just so yeah. overwhelmed by what was going on with the game. And then also the combat was sort of like automatic and like kind of um, like just kind of It definitely managing. takes a little while to kind of figure out what's going I, on. I, I, I while, like the least. combat in uh, uh, the Wii U game a lot more personally. Um, the mech combat was not as good, but the on foot combat like is very sort of fluid. Like it's not like you know, the first, the first game, and, you know, it was very much kind of a single-player MMO style of game, and it was kind of, you know, going through your, your ability rotation, you know. You use this, and then you use this, and then you can chain with this, and then, you know, this and that. And then with uh, Chronicles X, um, there is, like, if you were by yourself, there would be a, you know, a ability cycle so to speak an optimal cycle of you use this you use this you use that but your party members um sort of like give requests so to speak so they're like i need an ability that does this and if you do that then it like so you can choose between like oh but i wanted to do this but if you do what your party member does that like kind of puts you more in sync with your party and what's kind of cool about that is that that's kind of how you keep your party alive. You don't, there are healing abilities, sort of, but they do so little that it's not that helpful. Your party, like, keeps its own HP up by sort of just staying in sync with each other. So that kind of throws an interesting wrinkle into the battle system, I think. So you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. You're kind of also, like, coordinating with your uh, AI party members. It just makes it very interesting, I think. Um, I mean, but you know, yeah, it, it you know, it's it's very much a MMO sort of style game, and the you know the 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 story you know is is not as well constructed. Um, but uh, the first game was kind of a fun story. Like I didn't I didn't like the first one as much as a lot of other people do, but I really do like how it's. It feels like a 90s RPG. Like, it, not, not in terms of gameplay, but in terms of just the scenario. It very much feels like a nine, like a mid-90s RPG. Kind of vaguely anime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's like, it's got this sort of... I don't really know how to put it. It just feels very adventurous. Yeah. And like, so the, they, the, they... like, so many possibilities in this world that you can go... Yeah. Uh, and in the first game, like, a lot of people, you know, you were saying you were kind of overwhelmed, um, you know, it's got a ton of, like, side quests and stuff. I know some people, just like we were talking about this guy earlier, like, some people just get consumed by that. They have to do every single little, you know, the old man needs five iron ingots or whatever, and you, you know, go kill monsters that drop one. iron ingots. <laughs> Hell yeah! There it is! The oh, wow, that didn't take long! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I kind of... Just went straight for at that time. I should really <laughs> try it on the hardest difficulty just to see how crazy it is. Let's give the I people. I would like to see that. Give the people a show. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. But, uh, but yeah, with the first Xenoblade, like you don't really have to do the side quests. Like you can really just stick to the story, and you're not going to run into much trouble. I think I, I maybe stopped and did a little, just a little bit of grinding, maybe once or twice, but. For the most part, you can kind of just stay the path and don't have to worry about the side quests because the side quests in that game are really boring. Um, so I don't think it's worth it. If you just stick to the story, though, it's a pretty good game. I, I liked uh, I liked the last story better in terms of those those Project, Wii Project Rainfall uh, games, right? Or, or yeah, whatever they called whatever they called it. Uh, yeah, I think that was Project Rainfall. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I liked uh, nope, the last one. I, I, I really liked Pandora's Tower. I feel like a lot of people, people don't really talk about that one yeah. much. And I really liked it. It was like, it was the only game of those three that really kind of utilized the Wii. Um, you know, in terms of the controls, like it used the pointer controls, I thought pretty well. It had like a really interesting uh, combat system, I thought, with like the, the chain whip or whatever it was. Like you kind of use as a, as a grapple and it just had a had a unique feel to the combat. I thought, I thought it was a good game. Speaking of the, the Wii, were there any good like RTS games for the Wii? Because I, I feel like there are you could use the Wiimote as a kind of cursor, and it feels yeah. like it just would have been. Yeah, oh, it would have been a good fit. There are so many genres Jeez. that should have been yeah. utilized in the Wii. Like, yeah. Point Blank, Namco should have been like, here's the Point Blank trilogy on the yeah. Wii. Yeah. Like, so many light gun games, so many more first-person shooters should have happened, and yeah, I don't know if a whole lot of real time strategy games. I feel I like there might have been some, like for WiiWare, yeah. Um, I don't know. I want to say, I mean, there, was, I th I say there, was, there were like maybe two or so um, uh, games that Square Enix released in the, that were branded under Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And I never played any of them, but I want to say one of them might have been like a strategy-ish game, maybe. Huh. I, I could be wrong, but I, I know that they released a... I want to say maybe at least two it was called like one that was like crystal chronicles my life is a king um i don't <laughs> and there was there was i think oh i think it was like my life is a dark lord or something like that <laughs> that was like the why sequel. is that like a cw or like a nick <laughs> jr television show <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch that show yeah my life <laughs> My life is the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> and the seventh grader. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh, my homework. <laughs> well, who am I going to ask to the dance? Oh, yeah, I got I got to take the Earth Realm, but also the garbage. Oh. <laughs> I don't even understand how they were producing enough units to do what they are doing at this point. I just have, like, a stream of enemies coming at me. I have no idea how they're doing this so fast. Uh, have you thought about getting good? No, I don't know. And the, this is I'm trying. Hardest difficulty. Well, right? this is yeah, this is expert mode. This is the final level on on yeah. all the way on D. So oh like, shit! So yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's just like the game's just cheating. Yeah, it's probably just you know keep making itself like spawn units faster. Yeah, cheating essentially. Yeah, come on. Really <laughs> worm next to the, the shore. Yeah, they took over that base. Now they got this. Okay, I'm gonna try to see if I can just attack their base directly. Oh, but I did some research into it because we did a, a video uh, on uh, console real-time strategy games, and there's actually a, a bunch for the DS. And I guess that shouldn't be too surprising, no. but I, only like one or two of them I was even vaguely aware of. And I actually digging some digging deeper, I, I must have. I feel like I found maybe about a dozen games. Uh, There's, uh, I mean, the, I, I played. Um, well, well, was it Children of Mana? There was one. There was, a, yeah. or Hero, Heroes of Mana. Heroes of Mana and Locks Quest, and I believe one Final of Fantasy Twelve Final Fantasy, yeah. Revenant Wings. Yes, yes, and there's like uh, orcs versus humans or something like that, or not like some craft, but like <laughs> there's like oh. so many things that are on the enemy base. <laughs> oh. Now you're just like orcs and humans. Yeah, what? How do you're like what? That's wild. <laughs> orcs and humans fighting. What? Who's gonna win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had. I don't have it anymore. I used to have the the mana uh, RTS game. I can't remember. If I beat it, and is it any good though? I, you see, that's the thing. Like, like I, I, I know I beat Revenant Wings, Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings, and like I can't remember 
Look at this. Look at this. This is bull. Oh my god. Look at all these missiles. Oh my god. Missiles. I don't even understand. Um, there's a missile, Gary. But um, there's a missile in my I, house, I Gary. I, I can't remember if they're any good, and honestly, like, I don't feel qualified to say if they're any good or if they're bad. Like, I feel like most people would be would probably say they're bad, but mm -hmm. to me, it's just like, ooh, like, I, I, I just, I'm not, I, I'm just, I'm not really an RTS player, so I don't feel qualified whether to say it is a good RTS or a bad RTS, or, you know, it's, they were passable. I think maybe I didn't like. I, I feel like I did not beat Heroes of Mana. I know I beat Revenant Wings, but I don't think I beat Heroes of Mana. So I probably didn't like that one. I think but you consume I, games slightly different than most, because I because my logic would be like, oh, you beat them. They must have been at least all right, because or else you would have walked away from them. But yeah, I mean, like, like for like for me, like I won't. Like like my my thing is like I. Like, you know, like I say, I, I want to, you know, keep the backlog down. Like, I only buy games that I think I'm going to want to beat. And if I, like, really, really don't like it, I'm like, I just cannot enjoy this game enough to beat it. Then, like, I, I got to sell it. Um, ah, okay. That's fair. Like, that's fair. like the, the, the experience yeah, of... Not so much anymore, though. Like, I, well, cause... I mean, the thing is, well, I mean... Nine list. I mean, like, I, I, I don't sell games... If I had, like, I used to sell some games that, like, I had beaten. I was like, ah, you know, this game didn't make, like, a big impact on me. Or, you know, it wasn't anything that special. And then I, I went through this phase, you know, obviously before doing YouTube, where I sold. Uh, you know, I kind of whittled down my collection. Now, like, I, I regretted selling a lot of those. And I've, I've got several back. Um, yeah, but, we, we did but, that with Donkey Kongas. <laughs> <laughs> Sold like three pairs of tried, them. Tried, oh my god, tried to. I had to lower the price. Like, I, don't, yeah. I think it listed it four times, but kept on lowering the price. There was, there was two sets that were complete in boxing at Goodwill for $10 for so long. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, see, like for me, like the experience of playing from beginning to end is like really a really important part of playing a game to me because that's like. Getting to the end is what compels me. Um, like, it's hard for me. I mean, you know, I can play a demo and be like, yeah, this seems pretty awesome. But more often than not, like, I can't figure out from a demo whether the game is any good. Because I don't have that uh, driving factor. It's like... Okay, well, the mechanics seem okay, but I can't quite figure out how they're going to play over the course of the game because I've got to be compelled to get to that next step or I've got to think like, oh, how am I going to build my character? What am I going to do with my character? Like, it's always about what's driving me forward toward the goal that, that compels me with a game. And, you know, I think that's why, like, I've, I mean, if I had the, the opportunity to go to E3, you know, someday without it, like, costing a bunch of money or something, sure, I'd go. But, like, I think I've, like, lost interest in, you know, that, you know, that, that, that for years Playing and years. that are not done. Oh, E3. Now I realize, like, wait a second. I'm going to spend all day standing in line to play games that I can't even take home with me. So, like, it's like, what like what do I get out of playing a game for 10 minutes that I'm going to get to play three months from now? You know, that I could actually play the finished product, play all the way through it. And so I was like, you know what? You get a better view of E3 from home, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, but except, uh, I mean, you guys do have a very special case where you guys do go out and you make these, like, mini documentaries. So that would be, like, a great way to go. Oh, get yeah, interviews yeah. and stuff like that's what we do at, uh, at PAX like we uh, go out and try to just talk to indie game devs and kind of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah I mean I've certainly thought about stuff like that like ooh what would be some some good places to like you know where there's like a gathering of interesting people to talk to um, you know but I think you have to go into it with the intent of you know because we brought our, our cameras to some events and 
be like, yeah, yeah, we should we should shoot something while we're there. And guess what? We don't. It's only <laughs> if you go into it like planning, like we are going to do this thing. Like so, for example, like last year when we went to too many games, we wanted to interview a variety. We did a, a we were planning a documentary on Limited Run, which we released last summer. That's October, and actually. We um, was it in October? Yeah, believe it or not. Really, October? Wow. Boy, the game but, is going insane right now. I know. It's you know, I got this idea of like maybe I can just like chip it away like a little bit by a little bit. I'm just dropping a unit there every time I every every <laughs> life. <laughs> I can just last long enough. I mean look at he's he's lost a little health. <laughs> the base has. That's the B <laughs> on the uh it, well, so, welcome to the ten hour nonstop. <laughs> live stream of this level <laughs> for a while. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, what, so you you guys made a video for two mini games last year? You're or... right, right, right. So part of our plan for the limited run documentary was that we wanted to like open it up, just talking to random people. Like, you know, just we talked to some YouTubers, we talked to just, you know, random people on the show floor um, and, you know, got their thoughts on physical games and digital games. And we wanted to like open up the documentary with just random people talking about that. And so we're, we're like, that'll be fun. And so that we, uh, you know, we went into too many games last year with that plan and we did it. But, you know, outside of that, um, you know, we've shot limited things at conventions other than like our parents. Yeah. We almost had but, you know, it's David Wise. That was a good idea. Too. Yes. Yes. We, we almost interviewed David Wise. It's a, it's a, it's oh. a, a very exciting and heartbreaking story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Missing him by 10 seconds. Oh, uh, oh more, more like maybe 20 seconds. Tw 20 to Whatever, 20 seconds. you know. It's... Yeah, I, 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 think, I think he was drunk and didn't, didn't realize that he had agreed to do an interview. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look at it like, was, it's yeah. It over twice as many years. Maybe he doesn't want to answer questions about Wizards and Warriors 2 and why the title game music is <laughs> fucking phenomenal. <laughs> That's the like, one. Hey, you, you know, uh, it was interesting because, like, during his panel, um, this was at MAGFest this year, um, uh, during his uh, his panel, uh, I was surprised how much NES questions he got. Like, I didn't think people were going to ask a lot of NES stuff, and, and they did. Um, you know, I thought it was going to be like almost about, about battle toads, <laughs> but yeah, it was so funny because he like he doesn't like pronounce he doesn't like enunciate the T's in battle toads, so it's like battle odes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it like the battle toads is probably the best part of that though, that game, so <laughs> he questions all day, yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, well, it was actually funny, like uh, someone asked him, uh, you know, like. They were like, they were like, they were like the the pause music in Battletoads is the best thing ever. Like, can, can you give some insight into that? He's right. like, slow down. He's first. like, he's okay, like, full song. But... I, I I have to admit, you know, I did not make the pause music. Like one of the programmers just put that together. <laughs> That's pa awesome. Battletoads pause music, not David Wise. Everyone's. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, it's, it's just like a bunch of sound effects put into a simple yeah. beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the big punch sound effect and like one of the chipping sounds. It's like, or when it, like it's Street Fighter Two when you pa when you uh, pause it, and it's like what's that? It's Street Fighter Two and the Super NES when you pause it, and it's like grunts and punching <laughs> sounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure it does that. Is it right? Yep. No. Oh, yeah. Well, it has like it has a couple synth stabs like bam, bam, bam. Right. Is exactly what it sounds like. It's perfect. That is a pitch perfect. Yeah. There you go. Very You're welcome. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we missed him. Like, yeah, we were like to do it with and... like the Bagfest staff. Like, I talked to him on the phone. Like, like it, it was so weird because. Like, I was in contact with the MAGFest staff, and I'm like, you know, we really want to do this. And she's like, well, you know, we've kind of had trouble, like, keeping track of him ourselves because, like, his his phone doesn't work. 
you know, because he's he's got a UK cell phone and he's in the US. And so they like it out a hard time, like, you know, wrangling him up and stuff. And so I gave one of the MAGFest staffers my phone number and I just thought, you know, I, I tried. I can't say I didn't try. You know, yeah. I was I was yeah. satisfied with that. I was like, I, I tried. And like I go to the hotel across the street where um, uh, a bunch of my friends were hanging out and like at midnight I get this phone call from a Virginia cell phone number and I'm like oh my gosh and it's the 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 MAGFest staffer and she's like I'm standing next to David Wise here I'm going to hand him the phone he goes hello Mark and I'm like oh my gosh this is <laughs> like I was like not I was like prepared to not be nervous and all of a sudden I'm like super nervous <laughs> did you record it no, 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 no. Like, cause like we were just like, so I just wanted to explain to him, like, you know, Hey, we just wanted to shoot an interview. Um, you know, you know, can, you know, can we meet up somehow? And I'm like, I, you know, I can, you know, go get my gear and be there in like 20 minutes. And he was like talking about like, they were going to go down to like the bar to get some drinks. And I'm like, <laughs> great. So we'll meet you there. And like, we actually got there like quicker than I said I would. And uh, he just wasn't there. We're like, did he mean somewhere else? So like, we like split up and like went everywhere that like he possibly could have meant. And he didn't show up. We're like waiting around for like 45 minutes to an hour. And then like the Bagfest staffer comes and we're like, he never came. And she's, I'm like, you know, I, I she said she was gonna like meet up with him later. I'm like, like, maybe we can, like, follow you and go wherever you're meeting up with him later. She's like, well, later is now. <laughs> like, I was supposed to meet up with him now. So she calls some people she knows, and she finally finds out, like, where he is. And it's, like, in this, like, on the fifth or sixth floor or something. And so we go up the elevator, go up this room. We're, like, you know, the MAGFest hotel hallways are super, super long. And we're, we're going down the hallway and like way off in the distance, we see a figure go across the hallway. And she goes, was that him? I think that was him. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I wasn't paying that much attention. But we got to the end of the hallway and there was a stairwell like in the direction he was walking. And we're like, oh no. <laughs> and we thought, well, maybe he was going to, to where we were supposed to meet him. And so we go to the room I was like, it was so weird because it was just like, like, I thought he was like going to be hanging out with like, you know, like some of his composer buddies or something. It was just like a group of like regular old nerds like us playing Donkey Kong Country <laughs> 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 on a Super Nintendo in their hotel room. This is who he was hanging out with. And so we like. like tell, tell us about the soundtrack <laughs> when we play it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. Like, so, so anyway, we're like, you write this song too, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what was? It, was, it, was it must have been so weird. Yeah. And so, and so she was like, was David Wise just here? And they're like, yeah, he left like a man to go. Oh my god. Because so I want him. And so we like split up, like trying to go like all the locations he might have been. And then like I texted the staffer back, and I'm like, well, he's not here. And then she got back to me. She's like, I, I just heard that he went to bed. <laughs> it was like, this is the last night of MAGFest, too. Uh, so there, was just, there, was, there wasn't anything. There wasn't nothing I could do. So I, I can't say I didn't try, but we were, we were this close. We were this close. Might, might, might just have to go to England one day and just, just do it. <laughs> you cons in England. Yeah. You could do. You know, I've heard... I've, I've heard that they have more like, like day events. Like, like I, I don't think they have like conventions or at least not a lot like in the sense that we have here. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's just like a gathering of a bunch of people bringing their, you know, bringing their old Commodores or something to to to, <laughs> to yeah. play a bunch of isometric platformers on or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I know it's like it's on my bucket list to go to uh, Gamescom in Germany. Yeah, that would be, oh, be cool. so cool. Yeah. 
I always hear that. I always hear that's. I hear that's like getting better than like E3. Yeah, I think it's because they've they figured out instead of like how E3 is just like let's just put all the the normies and the journalists and the game devs in the same place at the same time. Watch, they're, a, watch a fight. Yeah, just watch a fight. They, they <laughs> like. I think uh, Gamescom is like okay, we have like a day for people who are like actually doing their jobs and trying to get PR out, and now yeah. here's when everyone else can come in. Yeah. Which is good. I think maybe might work a little and bit it's, better. And it's also very, very big. And also, it's like right in the middle of Europe there, so it's a completely different... <laughs> Angela like, Merkel is going to be opening it this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, it's an election year for her, so I guess she's trying oh, to yeah. reach out to the people. Yeah. <laughs> I love video Bada. games. <laughs> I play all the video game. I hope I have a boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, but we had a we had a friend uh, from England who came to Magfest uh, in uh, 2016, and you know he said there's really nothing like that, like at least in the UK. Yeah. Okay. Well, Magfest is pretty because it goes on 24 hours a day. Like that's that's it, the, it that's is. the appealing thing about it. Yeah. Is that it's yeah. just you know you're in this hotel and everything just you know you can go in the middle of the it night. Never to the never stops. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can't sleep at night, you can go play arcade games. Yeah, that's the. I think the, the last Magfest I went to, I couldn't actually get a, a room at the at the Gaylord. I was at the Marriott across the street. Which, by the way, that co- that that complimentary breakfast in the morning is, is clutch. Like, just <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, it does. Staying there, just go there. <laughs> that's what um, makes it worth it. Yeah, but no. it was no. What made it worth it was every night I left Magfest. I mm. walked out of the building. I heard the noise dim beneath me behind me and i went to my hotel room in another building that was quiet and maybe that's the reason why i stopped going back to magfest because i had i was able to have a moment of pause and reflection and be like wow i'm exhausted and i just got here (laughs) i think there was a time when i was hungrier and like i think i went to magfest like seven in 2009 was the first one i went to and that was like it was just like there, I was just a kid in the candy store. I was so, just so hyped up and so excited Ooh. to be like with people, and, and, and it was my first time on the East Coast, and like that was an incredible experience. And of course, you know, I owe Magfest for that. Uh, but you know, I, as it kind of went on, you know, a hobby becomes a business, and you lose a, a lot of it, loses its luster. And that was one of those instances really where I was like, I'm tired. I can't not <laughs> going from Alaska all the way to DC, and then yeah. doing. 70, and then immediately doing that. Yeah, 72 yeah. hours of nonstop like partying and con and, 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 and panels and meeting people and uh it was it's it's an incredible endurance and I'm also like I'm not getting any younger too, so those years are definitely behind. <laughs> yeah, I, I I've always been like the lame guy in, in the room that like wants to go to bed at a like a reasonable ish time. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of cool though, like this year at at uh, too many games, I was working on the Pikmin video, and like there was a party going on. And I'm just exhausted, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna pull out my game of Pikmin and just play this while the party is happening. Like this is the only time I can be at a party and want to play video games, and that is okay. Like that is. <laughs> yeah. and it, that was, honestly, that was just. Funny. That's always kind of the weird thing is like when you go to a, a convention like Magfest, and there's like just people, like the hallways are lined with people just sitting around playing P. SP and DS, and I'm like, all right, if that's what you really want to do, but you want to say you can, you can do that at home. <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta travel to a convention and spend a lot of money to do it by yourself in a hallway. Yeah, you gotta get all those but, puzzle pieces. Oh well, yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah I, you know, this was the first. Winner, play one, play one. All right, I'm doing all right. I guess. Was that hard mode? No, no. no. Oh, okay, you quit. I that. can't even imagine. I got. I don't have to play it for super hard mode, ultra expert mode. Yeah. Welcome to well, our no death run of Herzog's Vi. Yep. <laughs> well, this was this was actually the the first year that I didn't bring my uh, or or the first con- time I went I didn't bring my 3ds to a convention because I finally at Magfest got. I think I got like on the first day at Magfest this year. I got like the last puzzle pieces I needed. Yeah. And uh, and I don't think they've made any new puzzle pieces. So it's, I haven't checked in a long time. I, I I checked just before going to too many games. I thought, okay, I don't think there's any more puzzle pieces, but if, or puzzles. But 
yeah, there's no new puzzles. So it's like, I like, I don't really care about find me anymore. Like I'm all about the puzzles. Like you, you got no more puzzle pieces than I'm, I'm done street passing. So I, instead I brought my Game Boy Advance SP and played Game & Watch Gallery 3. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The SP is the, oh, the, SP is the best. The battery yeah. lasts forever. That backlight's great. It mm -hmm. can play that black, a kajillion games. Yeah, no, the SP, it's like the best system ever made. Ever made? <laughs> I mean, just the convenience. You can throw it in your bag and the battery lasts for a hell of a long time. It, it's, it's, it's so weird because, I, mean, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm playing like the backlit one. And I... I don't even have a concept of because to be honest, I bought the backlight one, um, like really just for posterity. Like it was already kind of after the GBA's day, and I was like, well, I want like the best version of the GBA to have for the future. Yeah, get that um, mic. And so I've like I haven't like probably had like a lot of like hardcore sessions with that system. <laughs> and, uh, <Ooh. laughs> like, and so I don't even know, like, really how long the battery lasts. And I actually, I brought it, um, <clears throat> I just went, uh, went out west to, like, Utah and Colorado on vacation earlier in June. And I, you know, uh, I brought, I brought with me because I was like, you know, again, I'm working on my backlog and I'm like, you know what? I could probably beat a lot more Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games than I, than I... Because you're just going to bring Fire Emblem like originally. Five or six games instead of playing through, just playing through Fire Emblem Fates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could be one game or I could be like five or six. So I thought, I'm going to bring my GBA SP. And so I'm like, most of the time though, I'm playing on like the low brightness setting because I'm like, I don't know how long this lasts because I'm used to like, we're like these days we've like just kind of the, accepted the, portable systems that last you have like a you have a battery meter you don't have battery meter on that right you don't and so i'm like how long does this last is the battery as good as it was when i bought it i mean it's been like you know 11 or 12 years and you know since that model came out and i'm like I, I don't know if the battery is as good as it was I, I don't know how that works and so i'm like you know how long is this going to last? And it never—I never saw the red light on it. I mean, I charged it, you know, most nights. But it, you know, we're, we're so used to these systems nowadays that last, you know, three and a half and four and five and maybe six hours. And you know, that probably lasts ten or twenty or I don't know, maybe more. I don't know. I—I I, I need to. I, I should. I should test it one day and see how long it actually lasts. Well, you can still get batteries for it. I flew to uh, Japan. I brought um, all three Castlevania GBA games. I think I played um, Harmony of Dissonance, the second one. Uh, I, I think I played that entire game on the flight home from Japan. Wow. We're really, really actually from Korea to uh, Alaska. We actually, was, you go past the point you want to go, and it was like, you know, just... Don't go to Korea to stop us off at Japan real quick. Don't. <laughs> like, it, it, I don't recall the battery even like it maybe went to yellow. <laughs> if. So you flew from uh, Alaska when you, or you went to Japan when you lived in Alaska. Yeah, this yeah. is this is also like, when I was a teenager. This, this like, was before the show start, like before HVGN. This started. is like two thousand. a while ago. Yeah, the two thousand and three. So, but like, what was it like? A lot easier flying to Japan from Alaska than other places, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only it time it's flown to Japan. It was a very long flight. It was yeah, it was like a twelve-hour flight. I think uh, I don't. Yeah, I mean, we've been we've been trying to figure out like you know like man, if we could we could like shoot some sort of documentary projects in Japan someday. You know, we're like you know we're we're like, well, what's going to be like the oh. best way to get. Were there? you asking because like. Alaska is a little more further west. Yeah. But yeah, and and north. Of course, so I don't know. Further north, though, I think in the oh, end, it's I, too I, far north. So I think yeah, flying out of Seattle, you know, is I think puts us on the proper. Uh, much, much north. Yeah, but we have some friends of ours getting uh, married in Hawaii, and after after their marriage, they're going to Japan, and they said like it's still a seven-hour flight even from Hawaii. Oh wow. It's Japan far away. You're splitting hairs at that point. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Strap in. Yeah, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the question now is, you know, 
what you, what what kind of uh, portable battery are you gonna have to buy for the Switch? <laughs> the last entire flight. Yeah. Well, maybe they have something. They don't have cigarette lighters I anymore. I have a, a, a an outlet. I mean, for for us, you know, when we set the the, the brightness to half, it pretty much lasted basically the whole flight from to and from uh, LA. Yeah. I'm a, Damn. I have, I, I don't know how you feel. I have bad eyesight. Like I need that brightness all the way up. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't. I mean, I, I, I prefer the brightness to be up, but I, you know, if it means I can play longer, I can begrudgingly yeah. accept bringing it down. Yeah. Just realized I'm the only one who's not wearing glasses. <laughs> Nerd. I'd love oh, to get LASIK. Guys, my eyesight's gonna go bad soon, I swear. I think the Game Boy Advance is the reason I have terrible eyesight. Because I played like so many nights were just spent like under the covers, like with a trying to hold a flashlight and then like playing like Tactics Ogre and just like a, you know like on the Game Boy. I Advance. don't know. I, I think Sped along the, this the original, bit. the original GBA had like this weirdly dark screen. I never really realized until recently just how bad it yeah. was because I'd always heard people like back in the day. You know, I, I got original GBA the day it came out, and I never really thought about it being exceptionally dark. Like I got Circle of the Moon on launch day, and it's just like, well, Circle of the Moon is a really dark game. Yeah, people yeah. were complaining about how dark it was. And so that was one of the reasons that Harmony of Dissonance, because the feedback from that is so much brighter. But also, like, I think, I want to say, like, Harmony of Dissonance and the SP came out around the same time. Because I remember playing Harmony of Dissonance on the, on the first model SP. And, um... Yeah. It means so uh, it's like a whole new game at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's completely different. But I remember people complaining about how dark the screen was. And I thought... People were just complaining, like, oh, the screen is still unlit. But no, like, if you take a Game Boy Advance and a Game Boy Color and put the same cartridge in both and look at them side by side, the Game Boy Color screen is so much easier to look at. Like, mm. it is just inherently less dark. I'm not talking about light obviously but i'm talking about the way light hits it it just the game boy color I like at, when after doing our huge blowout hour-long game boy episode like i definitely had a newfound respect for the color like i've always the color has always kind of just been there for me because i never there's not like that many color exclusive games that i'm like really into um uh, you know, some people like, you know, get all upset when you, you know, just treat the Game Boy Color as if it was just, you know, it's just another model of Game Boy. And, and to me, it is. It's got a few exclusive games, but to me, it's just an upgraded Game Boy. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, are much more passionate about it than I am. But I, 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 I have a newfound respect for it because it, it is, in terms of unlit screens, it is pretty nice. There's like virtually no ghosting on it. Um, it's you know, it's easy on the eyes, as easy as an unlit screen can be. Um, you know, it's it's actually a pretty pretty it's pretty neat system. It's <laughs> I'm slowly That's chipping away at this base. So say warlocked. Yeah, you talked about that a little bit in the end, uh, but you did a video on it a long time ago, didn't you? Yeah, that was the first. Uh, that was the first punching weight. And it was the game that kind of right, inspired right. Uh, that show in the first place because uh, I, I wanted to talk about Warlocked uh, basically since I got into this whole YouTube uh, <laughs> shenanigan business. Is and that this... Game Boy Color exclusive? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, all right. And uh, they were going to make a Game Boy Advance sequel, and I guess I think there's a, a beta that you can still download or at least just pictures and, and video of it out there, but they uh, they canceled that and there it came to be. But there's, there's a handful of Game Boy Color exclusives that are really, really good. Like also uh, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Ghost Metal Dabble, Gear. right? Oh, I mean, you know, in, in I, the U.S. it was just Metal Gear Solid. Which is weird. I almost, I almost got Ghost Babble. <clears throat> um, You're a hero, Corey. When, uh, 
Well, and, uh, min- under I, ten minutes. There was a there was a copy at a store near Corey's house when I was up that way, and um, I almost got it. I'd never really seen much of anything about the game, and it was you know I had a limited amount of cash, and I, I opted for buying other things. Um, and then later, someone was like, "Oh, thank goodness you didn't get that. That was bad." And I've always like assumed that people say it's bad, but I'm still like curious. So you like it? I mean, it's a Game Boy Color game, so like put your expectations accordingly. <laughs> but for a Game Boy Color game, it's fucking phenomenal. It has a super. It, it it is a Metal Gear Solid game in that like it has a lot of dialogue and a pretty good story. Um, but it's interesting in that it is not a remake of the. Uh, the NES game or the PlayStation 1 game. Mm-hmm. It's like a separate alternate universe, like alternate. It's a side story? It's like a side story alternate sequel to um, MGS 1 or something like that. I, so I it's think not I, canonical, but. No, no. And I, I said something <clears throat> to that effect in the video, and I think I actually got that fact wrong. You know, one corrected me. Yeah. So I, I, I also say, like, I'm not, I don't even know. The universe of MGS is huge and giant i'm probably gonna get it wrong but uh <laughs> has a ton of vr missions that you could also do two player if you want yeah. um yeah it, it's it's an incredible package for a gba game you know it is not one of or the all great games oh yeah gbc game thank you uh but for a game of color game it's incredible it's not one of the all-time great games ever made uh but it is certainly when you it's i don't understand how you can't look at that game and be like wow they took these limitations and like crafted an incredible little thing in this little box these little, all the limitations of the Game Boy Color yeah well you know what I, I actually uh, played um, when was it maybe it might have been uh, this past October um, I played uh, Resident Evil Gaiden which you know yeah. I'd always heard people not say nice things about that I thought it was really good Oh, I agree, actually. Yeah, I, I, I uh, did a video on Resident Evil Survivor on the PS1, and uh, it was sort of a Let's Play-style video mm-hmm. where we had a lot of fun playing the game because it's it's terrible. That ending, though. <laughs> I don't Try, know. You There's... beat that, right? You beat... Yeah, I, I, I'm I trying to blank on what happened during the end. You know, I, I it's actually <laughs> kind of funny. Like three times, he keeps getting bigger. He keeps hulking out more. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> no, no, the final talking... battle was... Just when you think he couldn't hulk out more. I am. Are we thinking where it's the? Uh, that's the one where you're on the cruise ship, right? Oh no, no, yeah. Well, I was, but I was saying like the point I was trying to get to is like, uh, people talked about Resident Evil Survivor as like, oh no, man, you gotta play Gaiden. Resident Evil Gaiden is that's the worst Resident Evil game. What are you even doing? And then I played, I did play Gaiden myself, and I was like, no, this is actually pretty good. And when you put it up against like the Resident Evil Game Boy Color port that they were trying to make, it, it comes across as like a smarter, better yeah, designed well- game. It, it, in a lot of ways, I feel like it kind of harkens back to Sweet Home. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's got more action in the, the battles. I thought it was really good. It got like, if you didn't have a ton of ammo at the end, then it was really tough to, to finish off the uh, the last boss and guide. But yeah, for Survivor, I actually, um, I bought the U.S. version sometime last year. And I, you know, I add it to my backloggery as I do. And then someone posts on my page saying, saying, did you get the U.S. version or the Japanese version? Because the, 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 the U.S. version doesn't have light gun support. And I'm like, what? I didn't, <laughs> I did not know. I don't the, think it matters. I don't, I can't imagine. Well. It doesn't appear where you shoot the zombies matters anyway. So it doesn't, but to the point, actually, but to the point that Grace was making, uh, about uh, Resident Evil um, Gaiden is is non-canonical and it ends with the implication that uh, Leon is a a, a a cloned monster, kind of like the thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the implication is that like post, I guess post Resident Evil Three, Leon is actually like a a, a, a BOW, um, you know. Just waiting to be he's basically, triggered. Yeah, he's basically like a tyrant, just like he's free. Right. He's gonna take <laughs> yeah. So is that why they probably pushed it out of the canon? Because yeah, everyone yeah. loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think because it's called Gaiden, Gaiden is Japanese for side story anyway. Yeah. So I, I, it, I think them calling it Resident Evil Gaiden is their way of saying the non-canonical fun times on a boat. You know, <laughs> 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 it's what don't count, everyone. 
Let's bear. Aren't there good dogs in that one too? Um. Good dogs. <laughs> Man, I don't remember now. There might. I thought you were friends with a dog. Or Barry becomes friends with a bunch of dogs at some point. Gosh, the... um, like I don't know. Um, maybe I need to look this no, up. No, I don't. I don't. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you made a joke about the video. Oh, wait, maybe I just made a joke. Maybe that that's like a joke I wrote, and then I'm confusing it's it. Like for yeah, life. yeah, you're on a cruise ship full of dogs. Just kidding, zombies. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a dumb little yeah, joke. Yeah. Like survive, so Survivor. Um, I was like, I mean, I, I don't really care whether you know it, whether the the gun support is good or not. It's like I I freaking want to play it with the gun, dang it. So <laughs> I, I uh, so I, I like as soon as that person told me that, I like go to eBay. I'm like, okay, I, I got to buy the Japanese version. And I found found this auction or not? It wasn't an auction. It was a buy it now. That that was like. Every single Japanese Resident Evil game in like mint condition, and it was like thirty bucks shit. Uh, Whoa! I'm buying that. So it was gotcha. like it was it was Biohazard, Biohazard Two, Biohazard Three, and Biohazard Gun Survivor for thirty bucks shipped, and they're mint. <laughs> so I'm like, that was that was a fun deal. And now I've got like a, on disc the version of the opening. Where where they don't cut away from Chris and like they actually show they show Chris sliding up. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you, oh yeah. Well, Chris lights up a cigarette and then we see Joseph. He gets <laughs> mauled. Yeah. On top of him dying, <laughs> and his head shows up when the monster is eating his brains. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Joseph, well, it sounds like it's like it's like, it's like dubbed over. Yeah. I, I did. Uh, oh, I played. Uh, no. <laughs> Played, uh, <laughs> this is a gun survivor with with the with the gun con and it was it was an interesting experience i mean i overall i would say i enjoyed it it's definitely very clunky um but but i i had fun enough with it like but the last battle like I, you know it's a limited lives game so i think i was on my last life when i finally uh beat the tyrant and you just like had like I, I had this, like, pattern where, like, I was just, like, going in a circle around the arena. And I stopped, turned around, had, had time to do, like, one shot, had to turn around, go in the circle again. Turn, and I just was doing that for, like, 20 minutes. And it was, like, it took the most concentration that you could imagine. <laughs> it was... But I did it. I did it, and I was yeah, proud of it. It's a great game. It's a great game. And, uh, I, uh... I, I was streaming on the uh, on the backloggery streams. I was, I am not too sure how I feel about Resident Evil Outbreak. <laughs> and I'll, have you all played Outbreak before? No, I never played the Outbreak games. Do it we... is. No, we don't. No, oh, okay, no, we don't. No, I don't have any of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I was streaming it, and like I, it's a very awkward game like you're kind of just in this like scenario where like they're meant to be online games but if you're playing it single player then you've just got you're like in a scenario and there's like other characters they're kind of just running around doing their thing and it's it just plays out very weirdly the controls are very strange it's it's kind of unclear like what your objectives are what you have to do but the but I, I had a friend over who was watching me play and the chat was just, they were loving it because they just thought it was so goofy. Like, as a player, it feels kind of miserable, but, like, the <laughs> way, like, the, uh, I, I, I forget what it was, but we were laughing really, really hard. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like this this one of the, the players, so to speak, but he was, you know, AI, and he was just like, <laughs> I was like dying and like crawling around on the floor. I was like at the end of my my ropes, and this other guy, he's he's like he's like crawling around, dying, and and he says something like I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's just something like use ammo wisely. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his dying words. It's, it's very awkward. Like it's just it's. Tell my wife I love using ammo wisely. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was. But it was something just like very. <laughs> when you really thought about the scenario that was played out, it was actually really funny. And so I, 
I, I, I, I'll, maybe I'll try it again with like the fresh perspective of how you can still play it online, can you? Is. But yeah, like I, you think I, you can play it online still? There's probably not a ton of people playing it though. No, but we could play it yeah, together. I, 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 might it. Be, I, have, uh, I have file one. I don't or file. There's two of them. You just you have the first one or the second yeah, one? I have the first one. Okay, that's one I have too. Yeah, it's. It's an awkward game, and you know, I was I was kind of looking forward to. Uh, I do I have it? I just want to say shout out to the chat. Somebody in there saying, "Suffer like G." <laughs> yeah, like G did. House of the Dead. What up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, typing of the dead. Yeah. That's the that that is the canonical. The only true House of the Dead game is yeah. the, of the, dead. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> the the floating keyboards in front of them. Love it. I've but, yeah. I have uh, I have I have Resident Evil Dead Aim, which is you know another gun survival game, and I was looking forward to that, but I, I need to I need to actually test it out because you're um, disappointed with uh, Dino Stalker. I, I, I you know I mean at the end of the day it's like how how bad can a light gun game be? I mean, you just shoot at stuff. It's fun, you know. So it's like it's like yeah, it'd be hard for a light gun game to be bad. But Dino Stalker, like I was not expecting this. Like you move around in Dino Stalker. Oh, you do that in on... Dead Aim too, huh? You do that in Dead Aim too. You move. Do around. you see? I, I wasn't sure, and I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. Dead Aim isn't going to be. I mean, it's not as fun you... when it's when it's. I mean. It... It, it needs to be on rails, I think, for it to be fun. Yeah, I mean, you do. I mean, yeah, you can walk around in uh, Gun Survivor, but like Dino Stalker, for some reason, I expect it to be on rails, and the controls don't work as well. And the the problem is, like Resident Evil uh, Gun Survivor. I mean, you are, you know, you're, you're just wandering around, and you know, you, you got all the time in the world. Dino Stalker has a time limit. I feel like a time limit only works in on rails game. Like you, you have to like collect these things to extend your time, and it just it did not work. I, I feel like the time limit was just just a bad idea for a game where you have free free movement. And I honestly I thought the gun survivor gun movement controls were better than uh, the the dino stalker one. So I don't know. We'll see. And for what it's worth, like the. The Resident Evil Gun Survivor series is, is kind of an ambitious one. They were really trying to do something. I think they were trying to do more than a House of the Dead style right. time, a time crisis yeah, type yeah. game. But yeah, like, I mean, it just didn't work out. I, I've heard that Dead Aim um, is maybe like the best one. I've also yeah. heard that the Co Veronica Gun Survivor 2, which only came out in uh, Japan and PAL, yeah. that that's even worse than Gun Survivor 1. People have claimed. Really? really? So maybe. I guess that's good it didn't come out here then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess the the Wii the Wii Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles are kind of like yeah. replacements for those games. Those are on rails, right? They I are think so, on yeah. rails, yeah. I yeah. haven't played them. I have them both, but I I got them at really? Target on clearance. Uh, they were I uh, think I got them both for ten dollars in a package. Next time at, next time at your house I'm at your house we should like co op those on street. Yeah. Is it better than a uh, Dead Space Ignition? Is that what it's extraction? called? Oh, extraction. That's extraction. Right. Ignition uh, was the was the mobile game. I thought I thought extraction was. Play. I mean, I thought extraction was pretty interesting. Like I thought. I mean, it's been a while since I played it, but I thought it did some. It, it had some interesting ideas. Uh, whereas I, I would say that the 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 Resident Evil Chronicles games are, they're pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, well, the Dead Space Extraction being. A, like I was a huge fan of the first Dead Space, and I thought that was like a hell of a treat, because because it, it really picks up it's it, it's it's a, a deep decent light gun game, but also because of the story and the universe, right. Dead I, Space, it really do a good job of bringing that into that game. Yeah, if I remember, I think I actually played Extraction before I played Dead Space. So. Oh, that's a, well, that's a that that might not be the best way to play that game. <laughs> Probably not, but I I still thought it was like. It was interesting because, for the most part, it's a different set of characters. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, you, you don't play as Isaac, but all of the characters and all the things that happen in that game, I'm pretty sure, it's still within that universe because it takes place on the Ishimura and right. 
it, it starts with like after they take out the marker and stuff like that and mm, it talks a lot about how the unitology uprising happened and and it, it, I, I recall it being a, a, a pretty 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 spectacular game for what it was trying to do yeah i mean it it, it was i forget Man, that first like so i good. feel like there Such was some game. some interesting mechanics and i can't i just can't quite well, remember you, you literally had, you could turn the wiimote sideways like you know how you adjust your uh, thing there, and you. Oh yeah, to to, to, to cut like, across the limbs. Yeah, yeah, and then you had your gravity gun to pull in like you know ammo and and other unlockables and stuff. And they had comic book, like literally like spoken comic books that were just like side stories about you know the culture of of the uh, the mining. Um, yeah, effort. yeah. Because the unitology stuff was only kind of like they didn't go too much into it in the first game. I mean, it was. It was explained, but you know, you didn't really get the size of it. I guess. You didn't need to really. It was. Yeah. I mean, man, man that game really holds up. Yeah, first yeah. one is is really really good. I, you know, I feel like I, I I don't know if this is still the the popular opinion, but like when the second game came out, I feel like like people were people thought the second game was better, but I always liked the first one better. No, I I think that is the popular opinion. And I've always been... we're this we're at Dead Space One. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dead, totally Dead Space Two it. is like a fun, gory action game that happens to be called Dead Space. But it's like, to me, it's like the, yeah. Well, I made, thought it was things made Dead Space One good, and it's like except for the asteroid battles. <laughs> oh, those, those are, are brutal. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like going from alien to aliens, you know. Yeah, and then like Dead Space Three was like half good. But they kind didn't of have all... local co-op. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, there was well, so there's... Much... There wasn't so local co-op. So on the co-op and there, stuff. There wasn't local co-op. You could play online. And I remember this because I got it for my boyfriend at the time for Valentine's Day because I thought we could do local co-op together, not realizing that you couldn't. Yeah. And it was... I, I got very upset. That's, that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Um... Yeah, we, we Cole Corey and I did co-op in Dead Space 3. I just don't remember a lot about it. I don't remember it, but... anything about it, yeah. The the thing with 2, though, like, I just remember, like, there being a lot of scenarios where, like, like, there was just, like, a bunch of enemies just, like, all in your face, and it was like... It's like going from... Couldn't have done anything to prevent it. Yeah, it's, it's like Alien versus Aliens. Because, you know, like, the first one is, you know, this is kind of a slow burn... Yeah, but I mean, two is just, like, definitely chaos. still got like that atmosphere. I going couldn't tell you it, like but... anything about the second game except for when he gets like the needle in his eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that I might be those commercials more than anything else. Oh, like, really? Only... I... That happens way, way late. I think that that happens like literally before the end boss. Which yeah, I recall the end boss that looked cool like i guess you can't, the dead space 2 is a good looking game and it's certainly like there's the set pieces are like lovingly crafted and it's a very gorgeous game but it's in service to something that like almost betrays the universe that the first one set up or at least like just has no interest in expanding that any further and just like there are a handful of se sequences that just feel like should belong in a different game yeah. I don't know. I, 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 and I think because if you just played Dead Space 2 and didn't play any of the other games in the trilogy, I think you can actually really, really enjoy that game until you go back and play Dead Space 1 and you realize, oh my god, this whole universe that they were kind of building up around all of these characters is super fascinating and they did nothing to really push it forward. Ooh. With Dead Space 3, I remember the, the, final, uh, the final boss in that was pretty wild. Yeah, is that when you're like, the like the planet or something like that? You're like, yeah, it's like this oh, that's right. like planet thing, and like and there's like all these like tentacles or something. I think, right? Yeah, and yeah, I, I think the grand reveal, and I think the uh, the big how that series ends, and because they knew that like we're never gonna make a Dead Space four, so I think they just like it ends in Armageddon. But like basically, you end up on a moon or a planet that is just necromorphs. Right, and that is what the marker is like the marker is like the flood or a Metroid, but it's like it, it is literally a thing that is going to gobble up and eat planet. And right. So you end up a a a a, a a a gathering of limbs and people to form a planet that eats other planets. Yes, <laughs> is I think how that fucking game ends. Yeah, and I think it literally ends with. 
oh no, it's going to Earth. We won't get there in time. Oh well, credits. I mean, yeah. that's how the DLC is. Yeah, the DLC like, ends. You know, like it gets there and it, like Earth is destroyed or something like that. Like <laughs> everything you do is like for nothing. <laughs> At yeah. the end. Oh well, it's, you know, you could just, you know, pretend that two and three don't exist. I guess. In the scheme of, of uh, really, it's Death Space One and Extraction. That's really all you need. Those two. Yeah. There, I thought the. Uh, they had like animated movies that were pretty good, I thought. Yeah. I remember watching them. Like I don't remember where I saw it. They're on Netflix or something. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I remember watching it, but I don't remember really thinking one way or the other about it. Yeah. It's you know, speaking of uh, of co op horror games, um, <laughs> it's kind of a sad story because. Resident what? Like uh, what? Resident Evil Five. Resident Evil 5, I don't know how you guys feel about Resident Evil 5, but I feel like that is, like, my favorite co-op game of all time. I'm, uh, we, we just started playing it for, uh, we're doing some, like, live streaming stuff for our Patre Patreon, and it's so fun. Like, I'm getting it's, so it's into it. It's really, really good, yeah. It, 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 it's it it's definitely great. not as tight as Resident Evil 4, but, like, I think as a co-op game, yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, that's, that, that uh, is the way to play it, is co-op. Right, I mean, I feel like... I feel like it's almost as good as Resident Evil 4 only because the co-op is so good. Mm -hmm. And it's got and Wesker is freaking fantastic at it. <laughs> well, you don't want to you spoil anything. I, 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 yeah, I know that you fight him at the end and, he, and apparently he finally dies in Resident Evil. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to say one way or the other. <laughs> say what you want about Resident Evil 5 and 6. It worked out because Resident Evil 7, I thought, was great. They brought it back and it was good and it's like I don't know, all is forgiven, or I'm not sure what you're doing with Resident Evil right now, Capcom, but it seems like you got something figured out. So bring on Resident <laughs> Evil 8. You know? <laughs> I still played 7. You know, I, I, I loved, seven like, I kind of loved that co-op diversion that the series took, because, I mean, you know, 6, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a weird Resident Evil game, and I felt like they had, like, built up the world so much at that point that it's like, they didn't know where to take the story next, so they just like made this game where they just put everything in and it's just like see what sticks. It was definitely, you know, it, it definitely went too far. But at the end of the day, I still thought it was a kind of an interesting action game. You know, like the the melee combat was actually really good in it. it had a good like the stamina system worked pretty well. Um, you know. I, it's an action game. I thought it was pretty decent. Um, as a co-op game, I thought it was decent. Not not as good as five, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it definitely a, a flawed game. But it, and a game that didn't really understand what its identity was. But I, I did not think six was a bad game. But I am glad they did not go further down that path. But what I was going to say was, uh, me and Corey were all hyped up. Like I played Resident Evil Revelations two when it came out and I really liked it. Um, but I played it solo. Um, and what, one of the things I thought was interesting about, uh, have you played revelations too? Not two. I played a bit of you one. Know, I, 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 one is one of my, you know, if you want to call the revelations games, like mainline, or at least sort of related to the mainline resident evil games, I, revelations one is pretty low on my list, but, um, uh, Revelations 2 I actually really liked. And uh, one of the things I thought was interesting about it, like you you play as two different sets of characters. And in each of those sets, one character can use guns and the other character uses like support abilities. And when you're playing the game single player, you, sw you can switch between those characters. Um, and, you know, do what you need to do. Um, but if you play it co-op, then, you know, that sort of seems weirdly unbalanced. You know, most people would think that, you know, oh, it would be boring to play as a character that, that, that doesn't have weapons. But I thought it would have actually been really interesting. I was looking forward to playing that, especially because Corey still hasn't played Revelations 2. And I thought, oh, well, that would be fun. I'll play as the support characters and Corey can play as the gun characters and, and that's going to be a lot of fun and we like you know we're, we're set all aside ready time to install it set aside time it. like cory got, got got his kids to go to sleep 
And then I, I'm like, I, I boot up the game and I like sort of do a little warm up in the, you know, the whatever they call it, mercenaries mode. And I just sort of play around and reacclimate to the controls. And then I go to the main menu and I'm like, I, am I missing something? I can't see a way to play the campaign online that has co-op, but it's local only. Like, I, it, I never heard anyone complain that the co-op wasn't online. I never heard anyone say, I never heard one way or the other. And I just, <laughs> as, I just assumed, I just assumed. And it yeah. was very disappointing because I was, I was looking forward to it. And I still whatever. haven't played it. It's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. That, you gotta yeah. That. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great that they included local co-op. That's fantastic. But yeah, you guys can play it's, it. it it's just a surprise, especially when the game does have like an online. I don't know if they called it mercenaries mode in, in, in that, but it's got an online mode, but you can't play the campaign. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Someone in the chat, uh, Mellow Gaming says, you, we could probably do it like using the share play. I don't know how much lag there is oh, for the hmm. non host player, but I know that it's definitely impossible to do it that way. Interesting. It, isn't that limited to like thirty-minute sessions or something? I thought it like? was, but that might just be for, for watch for spectating. Uh -huh. Which is, is too bad. Well, hey guys, uh, I think it's been a couple of hours now. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. I was gonna say it's like it's after, after. Yeah, I was surprised that you, that you kept playing. <laughs> you must be like really game. No, no, I was. I, like, I was it's it's the I was computer's like, playing you itself now. Game after eleven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> so, do you guys have anything anything coming up you want to want to tease? Any like episodes that you want to say like, hey, this is coming? Well, currently we're doing the uh, patron appreciation month. So, uh, people that are uh, on our patron, like we've been doing uh, streams that are almost daily. We got a whole bunch oh, of crazy. Wow. Um, we just kicked that off. But I'm currently working on a uh, history of the Red Ring of Death, and it's probably going to be you know uh, one of our longer it's, format it's videos. It's going to be a banger. It's going to be a long. Um, long yeah, run. It's that, that's that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, what oh, is your well, process like? Working on the, uh, oh, a, a patron exclusive video for uh, Kenji Eno. Yeah. Oh, Just nice. A patron. Yeah, he did the uh, D Enemy Zero and D Two games. So I don't know any long term uh, HBGN fans uh, might know uh, I covered those games many years ago. So now under Stop Skeleton, some fighting, <laughs> we are yeah. going to be uh, finally taking a closer look at the man, and then. Um, I have another project that actually I'm looking forward to uh, uh, having the people in the patron vote um, about what I'm going to do next. And I wanted to tackle another punching weight. So that's kind of like on the docket. So, yeah, right so now. many projects, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Always you know, so many. I, I know you guys understand that. So we, we're juggling a lot too right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and just put out her uh, uh, Pikmin video about uh, how she got on me a motor really, really likes Pikmin. Um, and that's on the Stop Skeletons for Fighting YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, you probably have seen the ukulele video. <laughs> that, that continues to uh, get a lot of comments from people. Um, but, yeah, you know, we had the, we, we've been really pumping out uh, content. So let's check out the channel, Stop Skeletons for Fighting. Yeah. What is your, your kind of creative process like? I mean, do you kind of – do you share uh, script writing duties? I mean, do you, like, kind of work through it yes. together? Well, we, we – we, so someone takes the the the, uh, the the project and it it we each kind of have our babies you know like mm -hmm. for the pick script that just went out recently look like grace yeah grace that was because i found out that shigeru miyamoto thought that pikmin would be the next mario which is why it was basically a launch title for the gamecube mm -hmm. and, it w and that's just like kind of crazy in retrospect mm -hmm. so it was just kind of like examining that closer but yeah like mostly it's we pitch each other ideas and and then um, we research. We you know usually I do the more research, uh, yeah. journalism stuff, and then Derek will has like just a knowledge of almost. I'm, a, I'm actually a giant nerd. I'm not yeah. sorry <laughs> to, to yeah. reveal this to you all now. <laughs> so yeah, like we we basically we take turns writing and editing, but it's mm -hmm. all it's pretty much like half and half. And then, yeah, at, at the end of the day though, like we, we both like read over and have hands on the scripts yeah. and then touch them both. So they, like they the both kind of go through that factory process. <laughs> The thing I always find, uh, you know, uh, the best thing about working on a channel, doing a channel with two people is that it's always so good to like have that extra set of eyes to kind of look over everything, like one final pass before you, you, you put it live. And, you know, yeah. you know, like, like, 
like like Travis is much better writer than I am, so I'll write and he'll kind of go through and you know kind of tweak things, you know, like explain it better, especially with the RGB stuff. Like he's very good at explaining things like in a much easier way than he's he's much better at getting to the point. I guess. Yeah, I, that I, was I don't know about that. I one of the I, 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 I just end up making scripts really long. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Grace is really good. I, I have a tendency to come to her with scripts that just have tons of information and all of this stuff. Intros that are 500 uh, yeah, words Yeah, and she's just like, no, <laughs> no, no, stop it. Good Cut it down. Boy, boy. What, what, yeah. what stops me from making the ending too long is that the, the version of our ending music that we have, like, the low music looping is not, like, that long. It's, and it, it's And I've never been gotten around to making a longer version of that and i'm too lazy to make a longer version of that and i don't like any every time i make it like where it's like oh it's like five seconds too long for the low music and i have to find a spot to cut it and i don't <laughs> like doing that so that's what it, that's what keeps me from making at least the end of the video too long <laughs> yeah but it's it's definitely fun it's it i think it's i'd much rather do a channel with with somebody else than to do it all on my own. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, I, it, I, also, I, it keeps I, you going, too. This far on my own. You know, when you have <laughs> each other to, like, you have another person to push you, you know, like, to say, like, let's let's get this done. You or know? someone else you can tap out, you know, like, can you can you take care of this for me? I'm, I, I'm, I'm so busy with other things here. That was yeah. one aspect of the Happy Video Game Nerd, that it was, a, it was you know, pretty much all me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot to do and it's nice to be able to split some duties now so stop yeah. this and find us a new chapter for uh you know my production like I, I you know i say i've been doing this for 10 years but i kind of feel like i've only really been doing it like at the the i've been in the last two and a half years with stop skeletons and fighting been going at a different pace than i was a happy video game nerd so like yeah it's been 10 years but really the last two and a half i feel like we're like a different not that they were more important but i just kind of feel like there's a big separation between how right you know to, to say it's been We've 10 already years made, unbroken. Uh, pretty much the same amount of content that you made during the Happy Video Game years I, I, during I, the last I two years. I need to years. check, but I think we're... we're we, we, might, we might have beat... If we haven't passed in total videos, then we're certainly coming up on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you... Just you, in time. You rebranded re the channel, right? You didn't You didn't start a new one. Or yeah, I really never had a, ch a branding beforehand. I mean, it's still technically La Pat Jello or Low Fat Jello. Yeah. Um, which was just some dumb thing that I, I chose in 2006 because that was how it worked on YouTube. And then yeah, yeah. I was like, a, doing it you know, like I just gaming that historian is, is like Mc, McFrosticles, the gaming historian. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how you know it's old YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like like LGR so Dan, is like something Dan, weird too. Or something like that. There's that's cute. Now it's like a badge of honor. It's like yeah, I've I've had an account since I was sick. Good. Well, well, um, well what, one one last thing I have to ask before before we go off is is, is there is there a, a particular origin to the name Stop oh. Skeletons from Fighting because it sounds really like like it's like very random but it's like it's it's like it's catchy and memorable I think. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I kind of like it because it doesn't feel like it really means anything, but it's just. It's, it's a cool name. Exactly. Well, thank you. No, that's, <laughs> that is the logic behind it. It's a Game Genie password for the NES game Castle of Dragon. And oh. it's, it is it's just a Game Genie code to stop <laughs> these skeleton <laughs> enemies from attacking. But the, the, the syntax that they decided to print in that book was, quote, stop. Stop skeletons from fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it sounds like it sounds like it, you're you're trying to to convey a message. You know, try trying to say you're trying to say something important that the world needs to hear. The skeletons need to stop fighting, but it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything. So that's why I but, think it's funny. It's open to that interpretation, <laughs> and also we. we we tend we tend to be try, we, even though the ukulele video is very negative. We try to be you know very positive. I or think that's, that's important. We have a reason behind it. Mm -hmm. So I, you know I think the the idea of stop fighting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we can get behind that. That's that's that is definitely think, not too far from you know how we feel. That is that's great. I mean we do like you know we we always just like talk about things that we like you know and it's very rare that we'll like focus on. I'm things always that we looking don't. for something to like. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. what I feel. 
And I think that that's something, if, you know. If like, we disagree, have like a fun conversation about why you disagree or, you know, right. it's it's you don't have to lose a friendship over <laughs> opinions about video games. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think, you know, I think that that's something that's kind of resonating these days. You know, like the kind of the anger phase is kind of like passed for a lot of people, you know, as, as time has gone on. And mm-hmm. I think people just want to, you know, hear like fun stuff or happy stuff <laughs> yeah. about games. Pause so vibes. Like, it's like we want to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Is All right. That about do it this time. Thanks guys I for joining so. us. Yeah, Thanks for having, fun. Yeah, thanks having us. Good talks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. Um, yeah. Everyone, take care. Thanks again. Yeah. Take care. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>